Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the United Gaming Podcast. I am your host Darren, aka Dow, and with me once again is my fellow cohort, the Canadian. It's Dennis. How you doing, Dennis? Hey, how you doing? I believe you've already done a podcast this weekend with Dark, uh, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> we we done one yesterday, so this is a double whammy for me this weekend. So since I'm going yes. away for the next maybe two or three weekends, I'm getting everything done this weekend. So, <laughs> so yeah, I hope yes, you'll have enough uh, D boy to go around for uh, two weekends or three weekends. So yeah, double dose of D boy, pretty much in Dark and. Double myself. <laughs> Just like Ben said on the Radical Rascals podcast a few weeks ago, the three D biggest breasts in the podcast land. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and um, I'm doing my fits, uh, my final stuff, and we have another guest with us. So we do. Um, third time's a charming once again, another guest, and it's our first female guest. Hey. She's. She's going around the podcast front actually at the moment because she's been on ones I've listened to. She was on the Radical Radical podcast, the episode before me, and the last two hour one, mm-hmm. and then the three hour curse hit. <laughs> and then she was on the Operation Kill screen there a few weeks ago talking about E3, and she had her thoughts on it as well. And um, please welcome Sammy, aka Tatsplat. Hello, Sammy. Hello, how are you? I am doing splendidly and just here chilling Rela- recording this podcast before i had to work chillax. so do you know do chillaxing yeah okay chillaxing and um, just basically recording this before i have to work in a few hours and um, before we move on this podcast will probably be up the sunday after this week because um since dennis is away and Derek won't be around it'll probably be a week delay on this podcast so you'll probably be listening to this next weekend um, as opposed to this weekend, so just basically, you, you, you just know anyway once this comes up next Sunday anyway. Um, so, um, Sammy, just let, um, for those people who don't know about you, just go ahead and give some details about yourself. Well, I uh, started on YouTube way back in 2009, long, long time ago. Um, I had videos up for about a year, mostly like pickup videos, a few out and about videos, a couple of game reviews, stuff like that. And then life happened and I had to take a break for a while. Um, but I'm coming back now and I hope to do more of the, you know, the stuff I used to, but I'm also going to add a couple of, of new things to the channel. Um, I'm hopefully going to have up some like iPad jailbreak, uh, tutorials and stuff like that. And I'll talk about one of the things a little bit later in particular. Oh, cheeky, <laughs> cheeky. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, I'd rather, you know, jailbreak something and not pay for it than have to spend tons and tons of money because, needless to say, I'm having to, to save my pennies because I'm getting married in December and weddings are expensive. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but Yeah, um, I, I can I, could, I, I can see that anyway because, I don't know, of course, um, Andy from the Radical Rouse Club, guys, he's getting married next month um, actually so he is yeah poor so. guy had to sell all his games off I'm not doing that Screw <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm never going to get married I'm just going to be solo for life pretty much uh, this will probably be a day um, that I will probably settle down hopefully and find a girl who can you know sh- maybe share the same interests as I do or else I'm going to be solo for life pretty much <laughs> um, but I'll welcome along anyway though um, basically I'll say Sammy's run on She's been on YouTube. Talk of basically a nearly three year hiatus. Yeah, it was it was uh, about three years. Yeah, and then she's come back stronger than ever. Woo-hoo. Different hair color <laughs> and all. Yeah. But the the same um lovely southern twang she has in her voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately I um, get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I just find it endearing though, is a certain times, um the certain women's accents kinda not to go all lovey dovey here though, but I just actually find charming though. Like I like your voice, I like Charlie Tarasic's voice. There's certain women's voices I find charming. So I hope that's a compliment to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, let's go on to news here now. Um I don't think he's talked a lot of news, did you, Dennis, when he started uh, last night? No, we talked about uh, radical entertainment and uh I think that's pretty much what we hit up upon a couple of uh Little news articles like uh, Expendables 2 video game, 
which I'm looking forward to a whole lot <laughs> with the, like the movie and the video game now. That's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, have you checked it out? Have you checked out the screenshots and the information on that? Or? I have not, and no, I am um, no. so haven't. I think it's a downloadable game, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a downloadable game. So, uh, so in our words, it'll probably suck because most sort of there has certain been certain sort of movies sort of. Game tie-ins yeah. that have been downloadable, which have been pretty mediocre, and I'm sure this is probably going to be one of those out of rush jobs, I guess. <laughs> well, I, guess, I think it's done by Ubisoft, so it should be too too bad, I guess. Well, you never know, but you know. Um, and apparently, they're using the the original cast for the voices, so Terry Crews, uh, Sylvester Stallone, Jet Li, all those guys are going to be uh, voicing their characters in the movie. So in the movie, in the game, uh, that's coming out. I think it's coming out at the same time as the the movie. So I'm looking forward to it. Four player co-op, uh, top down shooter. Um, it should be pretty good. I think it's. Uh, I hope it's pretty good. So <laughs> I'm a big. Uh, let's say that I freaking loved the first movie. So looking forward to yeah, the second one. Yeah, the first one. movie was really good. I was actually just about to ask. Say that. Have you ever seen the first one? Oh yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was. yeah, I I I watched it like on DVD, so I did like a few months after it came out in the cinema. We um, were. Uh, I actually I thought. Oh, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> we were. Um, I forget what movie we were watching in theaters, but we saw the the trailer for it for the first time. We had neither my fiance or I had heard of it, and like every person they showed, like both of us got more and more excited. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sadly, we didn't go see it in theaters, but as soon as it came out on Blu-ray, we bought it and we've watched it multiple times. Yeah, I've only watched it once, so I have, and I actually, I thought it was pretty good, though, but maybe I should watch it again, but it is a pretty yeah. action-packed film anyway, and the, se- the second one should be just as mad as ever, pretty much. Well, they have, like, they have even more guys now, Chuck Norris, yeah. uh, Van Damme, so it should be pretty interesting, and still not, not so long, but uh, Schwarzenegger and um, Bruce Willis have bigger roles in this one, so it should be Yeah, they'll probably... Double their t- their double their and <laughs> down the leg. What was it like three minutes or something? Yeah, so well, I don't think it was that. Yeah, I don't think it was even three minutes. It's the church scene, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it. But I think that's the the scene that got the biggest. When I went to see it in the theater, like it was pretty much only guys in the theater. So, like when he showed up, everybody just stood up and clapped, wow, <laughs> screaming like crazy. That was awesome. It was pretty good. That's one of the things I would love to go. I'd love to go somewhere like that in an American cinema or Canadian cinema, just like watch like a packed, watch a film in a packed audience. So mm-hmm. because I usually go during the day though, yep. I'm not one of those kind of night guys though, and like there's little to no people. Like sometimes when there's like a popular film, there's a bunch of people there, like you know, children with their, and like people with their families and that there. But my like, guy went to the Avengers there a few weeks ago, and I was the only person in the fucking cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only person. I bet the, if there was like a projector guy there, he'd probably be saying, "For fuck's sake!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. They don't have a choice, I think, to run the movie, even though the the cinema's empty. They don't have a choice to run it. So. Well, yeah, but like, guy was the only one there. <laughs> speaking of packed movie theaters, what movie came out like this past weekend? Because I live right next to a movie theater, and I couldn't even get into my apartment complex because there were cars backed up. Really? Walking I'm, the road. Amazing Spider-Man, I presume. No, it comes out. It comes out on Tuesday. Amazing Spider-Man. It was on right. a Friday night, and like literally, I I seriously could not get into my apartment complex. I had to wait. So, and it's it's never been like that before. I was trying to figure out what it was, but I couldn't think of anything that was coming out this past weekend. I'm gonna go. I assume I assume it was out there because I assumed you got you say, um got it before us now because it's coming out here on Tuesday as well though I believe and I'll probably be going to see it with my brother yeah I'm going to go see it before I go on vacation but I got, it's coming out on Tuesday since it's uh, 4th of July they want to mm-hmm. release it on the 4th of July so oh yeah that's right 4th of July is Wednesday so get their big bucks in pretty much yeah pretty much it, it can't be Ted right I don't think it's Ted that. I wouldn't think so not where I live I live in a retirement town <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I don't think it's uh. No, there's nothing. I don't see anything. Might have been celebrity about or something. You never know. Yeah, maybe. 
Uh, anyway, moving on now. I actually forgot to mention this last week. Now it's a bit of old news at this point, but I completely forgot. It's um, Okami HD is coming to the PS3, PSN in the autumn. Um, I know Des never played Okami. No. Did you ever play Okami, Sammy? I played the original one on the PlayStation 2 and loved it. The art style on that is amazing. Will you be picking this up? <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> yeah, I will be as well. I got the US version of um, Okami on the PS2 because I just wanted to get it as soon as I um, like New Year. And it came out like basically got like a month before it came out here and just got it. And it was my favorite game of that year. And I got the Wii version as well, but I barely played a lot of it because you think the Wii controls would actually be good for that, but they don't work at whatsoever. Oh, really? It's very shit. Like, when you're trying to do, like, a slash move with the Wiimote, it just, you have to do it se- several times before it actually, you know, registers, mm. which is kind of really annoying, though. Um, But, like, I, I've been playing the sequel on the DS. I'll talk a bit about it, about it and, um, soon enough. Um, but yeah, it's coming out in the autumn. I think it's like twenty dollars, so probably about fifteen pound here, I say, and one side here. Definitely getting it though. Love that game. One of my favorite games of all time. Um, basically, if you're a fan of sort of Zelda, it's kind of like that, but it has its differences. Um, so we'll definitely be getting it anyway. Um, a lot of news like last week about Nintendo 3DS XL as well. Um, people were going up in arms about it, saying why is there one being released so soon, and why is there not a, sec- a second, a- geez, second analog stick um, with it though? Because that's what people wanted the most though, is the second analog, like a circle pad on the, the 3DS redesign. But there's not. Instead, they're basically going to put another Circle Pad Pro XL. For that one, mm. so basically, Nintendo are basically getting more money from you. Um, what a I know surprise. you don't have. What a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a surprise indeed. And if you've been listening to certain po- podcasts, I'm sure a lot of people have had their two cents about it. Mm. Um, Operation Kill Screen one this week had their two cents about the whole 3DS scenario and the. Um, and this was before the Circle Pad Pro was um, basically announced though the XL one so um you don't have a 3DS don't you not Sammy no I don't I've been wanting one for a while um and I'm glad I held off now <laughs> hmm. yeah because I know I, the thing is I couldn't care less about this here because I already have one but for people like yourself and like ones who you have like vision problems like that prefer the bigger screen so they can see properly I can see why it's like yeah go ahead get it but well, for people who already have a 3DS, and oh, I'm going to trade my 3DS in to get this one, and they have to pay like a bit more money towards it or something, I just don't get that whatsoever. Yeah, the, the, only thing I'm mad, the only thing Sorry, I'm mad about ahead. is the uh, the colors. The, they're hideous. I mean, the original 3DS has got all the you know pretty purple and and all that, but the the red and the blue are just ugly. <laughs> Apparently we're getting a silver one here yeah, though as well. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah, they're gonna be a few people said jealous oh great, we're getting we're getting the good colours instead of like the red and blue or something. I don't know. Um as I say I couldn't care less. Go ahead Dan, what were you gonna say, Dan, before? I was gonna say, uh besides the biggest the bigger screen, are there any differences in hardware? Really? It's pretty much the same though. I think the button layout's a bit different though. It's not like, you know, the, the the start the select the home thing I think they're like you know are actually kind of proper buttons now rather than you know like the flat touch screen kind of things now yeah but they're like the they're not adding memory or anything like that more no it's just pretty much a bigger screen so they're really um, off then so, okay <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much my sentiment with the DSA XL because the DSA came out in like a year later the DSA XL came out and it's like really it's yeah. just it's just the same thing with a bigger screen. And people and and sorry, but people go absolutely go gaga over that. Mm-hmm. I just don't. For those who haven't got one, I can see why they may be waiting off. But for people who just trade them in and you know get one of them, I I just don't get whatsoever. No, I just got one. I just got a 3ds uh, for my nephew. I think it was for Christmas or something like that. And now he's going to see this one. He's going to be like, "Can you buy me this one?" I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. It's the same thing, so no, you're not getting. <laughs> so, we'll yeah, fat, fat chance there. Um, 
I, I'm not getting it though. Um, and I don't even think I haven't even seen an actual Circle Pad Pro box here at all. I think it's nowhere to be found. I don't know if it was available anywhere around your, your parts, but nowhere around here. Couldn't find it. Like even on eBay or anything, it's all like stuff from, imported from Hong Kong. You have to get it from Hong Kong. Okay. It's pretty much nowhere, and like go for like you know thirty pounds, forty pounds. Like I'm not paying that. So you pay even more to import it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I want to get the Circle Pad Pro for um, Ted Icarus. Mm -hmm. Because. Your left hand pro. <laughs> yes. And Holly, who's on the Operation Kill screen, a fellow Canadian, um, is also left handed. Okay. And she, she has the same thing. She can't play that game without the Circle Pad, and I need it. Like, I try playing it, though, like a bunch of it with the, you know, the touch screen and stylus and things like that, but. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't get used to it, though. I need the second circle pad to play it. Okay. Um, will you be getting a 3DS XL, like, probably after your wedding? <laughs> um, hopefully before. <laughs> All right. But um, more than likely, yeah, I'll have to, to hold off on any big purchases just because, of course, weddings are, are pocket drainers. Someone can go, so you just basically hint to someone, um, my wedding's coming up here, um, could, um, I want a 3DS XL. <laughs> yeah, so put just, it on the just, registry. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, just say it now. Um, anyway, that's enough talk about that now. Um, Far Cry 3 has been delayed. Yes, go figure, another, another delay. delay. Of, wow. Another Yeah, but um, just don't. Hold yourselves just yet because it's actually just delayed until December, I believe. Which I do not get whatsoever because December is pretty much dead country for game releases. Yeah. Well, they're going to be the only ones, so I guess. Yeah, maybe that's their plan. Yeah, but like everyone else, pretty yeah, that's probably it. But the thing is, though, unless it's like a Star Wars game, they never come out in December because Ned's of Republic 2, I think, came out in December. And Old Republic came out in December, and oh yeah, the the Donkey Kong Country Returns and the few other Nintendo 3DS games actually came out here in December last year and the year before. So mm -hmm. not always, not always a thing, but it's been delayed unfortunately. Um, we are planning to pick this up, Dennis. Uh, maybe the campaign looks interesting. I mean, I've never, besides Far Cry One, I've never played another Far Cry game after that. Uh, because I found the the first one to be a little a little too tough, a little a little hard, so uh, I didn't really play the other uh, the other Far Cry games. But this one looks pretty interesting. The story and uh, and everything has me uh, interested, so I might pick it up, especially if it's in December and there's nothing else. Could be a pickup for me. Um, I don't know about it yet. I think it looks good. I played the second one. Didn't really care for it that much though. It's just it's like this Africa. You're in this Africa. You're pretty much in Africa, and it's like this open world, and basically one of those sort of kind of bit of a micromanagement things. Like you have these guns that can break, and you have to go and repair them and things like that. It's like yeah, I, it's just certain things about them I don't like. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played any of the Far Cry games, Sammy? I played the first one on the um, original Xbox, and it was meh. Um, so, needless to say, I didn't pick up the second one, but the third one, it looks interesting. I don't know. It's not going to be like a, a first day pickup for me, but maybe once the price drops, I might try it out. Yeah, I'll probably be waiting on it as well for a price drop, though, because there is a, there is a bunch of games coming out this year, though, and I want to get, though, and it's not really one of the ones on my high list, though. Um, I'll probably talk about it, though, when we get into our discussion later about our favorite games. Um, of 2012 and sort of what games we're looking forward to for the rest of the year as well. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's delayed till December. If it was supposed to be out in September, early September, and it's delayed, delayed again. So what's what's next week going to start? What's going to be delayed next? <laughs> Borderlands 2? Oh, fuck, I hope oh, God, that. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Ben would be fucking going if shit if that <laughs> happens. Yeah. His, tonsil his tonsillitis will actually be getting worse yeah, then after that. <laughs> it's going to explode. <laughs> Basically, just say, I'm going to say it's get well soon um, for that there because yep. I never had tonsillitis, but it's I heard sucks. it sucks. Yeah, I used <laughs> to have it once a month and I'm having to get my tonsils removed. It's not fun. No. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had it though, but I probably would know if it 
what's like if I did. Um, Criterion. Um, you know, get you those guys who made the Burnout series and a, a certain first-person shooter called Black back in the PS2 and Xbox mm-hmm. are apparently in charge of the Need for Speed series now. So basically, the EA, those other EA studios that worked on them are pretty much gone for that there now. It's basically, yep, you, you made the best Need for Speed game for the past like several years, so basically you can take care of it now. And pretty much that might signal the end of Burnout at this point, if that's the case. I don't think so. I doubt it. I don't think they're going to ditch Burnout. They wouldn't do that. I don't think so. It's been four years since the last proper Burnout game, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, you know, who knows? Maybe they're going to do uh, Need for Speed Burnout. Mm. You know, who knows? I guess that would probably be at the crossover. Pretty much will happen, yeah. though. And since it's theirs now, they can do pretty much whatever they want with the series. So I'm sure he well, most anything. Well, most wanted, though, from what I've seen of it, pretty much is, like, Burnout Paradise, death license stuff, mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I know you're looking forward to that game a lot. Very much so, yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it as well, though. I, I, but I'm not the biggest fan of Burnout Paradise as other people are, though. So, I just basically, but, you know... Hindered, hindered basically for the I'm not going to go oh can't wait for this game so badly now but you never know Um, have you ever played the Burn- are you into the Burnout series whatsoever Burnout 3 was absolutely amazing it's probably one of the best soundtracks I've actually heard on a game in a long long time mm-hmm. Um, I didn't play Paradise just because I heard that it was more it wasn't like the original original 3 Burnouts is that correct? No. Or did I hear wrong? Yeah, it's 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 basically an open world though, so it is. It's basically this big city, um, and you travel around, and there's these certain points that you could do these like races or events though, and that's probably the worst part of it though, because it's usually you go to this checkpoint for the 50th time in this race. It's just usually you have to end up in the same, you know, go to the same sort of areas and go to the same checkpoint at the end to end the race or event, and and. Um, but there's that other one, the multiplayer aspect of the game was great though, because you can hang around with a bunch of friends and do all these little, um, you know, tasks, like go to this area and do these little tricks and like, you know, smash 10 billboards and that there. And that's pretty much what was the best part of that game, because the whole racing aspect of it, um, from like, you know, previous Burnout games, mm-hmm. kind of was kind of lackluster, but the whole, mm-hmm. you know, social aspect the multiplayer stuff was great yeah see i don't normally like racing games at all really but for burnout it uh for some reason i really loved burnout especially burnout 3 i don't know i guess it was the the you're supposed to crash into things yeah <laughs> that uh i loved a lot but i absolutely loved burnout 3 burnout 3 is um, still my favorite one though it's the one i really i, I played a bit of burnout 2 before i think i rented it or something and then i Got, I think I rented Burnout 3 and for the Xbox, and man, I loved, I just, that game blew me away, and basically I think I bought it like, not long afterwards. That was before um, Takedown, right? No, Burnout 3 was Takedown. Uh, take yeah, yeah, okay, take yeah, I was wondering why, okay, yeah, okay. And I was like, Burnout Revenge yeah. came out like a few years later, and then Paradise, and then they had that like Xbox Live one or whatever crash, which I don't think that popular i haven't heard good things about that one no i don't think a lot of people played that one soundtrack yeah. was interesting but i don't think uh, a lot of people played it no nah, like i uh, i think people just wanted a proper burnout sequel yeah and instead they just got like a silly little wee spin-off game mm-hmm. basically with the crash mode and trying to chalk up you know high score and out there mm-hmm but yeah i, I absolutely love the i love burnout 3 it's my favorite one in the series Guild Wars 2, probably not a lot of you are probably wondering, <laughs> not excited for this game. I'll just put it in here anyway, just in case there is a, there is a listener right there that says, Oh yeah, Guild Wars 2, great. <laughs> um, it's finally gotten a release date. And this game, I think, has been in development for a while because, mm-hmm. for my I can guarantee, it's probably, been, probably since the original Guild Wars that came out and the, the, you know, the, the other ones that came out, like Factions and Eye of the Storm and those ones as well. I've probably been in development since then, I guess. And it's been, has a release date finally for the 28th of August. Yay. So <laughs> basically, it's in the shitstorm of game releases because, like, you know, the big heavy hitters come out around that time now. Yep. 
you know, Borderlands 2 will come out like a few weeks after, um, games like that now. So if you're into your online RPGs or MMOs or whatever, I'm sure you're going to really enjoy that. And I've been playing an MMO game at the moment, which I'll talk a bit more about um, soon enough. Um, but did you ever play Guild Wars at all? Are you interested whatsoever, Sammy? Nope. <laughs> No, Dennis, I don't think you ever tried it whatsoever, did you? Not at all, no. I actually have the original Guild Wars. I got, like, the, the, the collector's limited edition one for, like, £10, and it has, like, a big, big-ass bloody manual or something on it. I think it has, like, an art book as well in it or something. Okay. Um, I played, like, some of it, though, and it was pretty good, but it's been a long-ass time since I played that game. I never played any of the, like, the expansions or whatever either, so... And finally, another release date I just put down here, just in case there is people actually like this series. I, for one, couldn't care less. Pokemon Black and White 2, which shockingly is a sequel to Black and White because you never see actual sequels to the colored Pokemon games. Mm-hmm. You usually just go on to the idea of Black and White, like color, two colors, and then do like a spin-off color. You know, like red, blue, yellow... Gold, silver, crystal. I'm not going to go through them all here. I'll be going all day, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but they it's coming out in October, I believe. October 7th, so it is. Um, pretty much, I don't know if that's worldwide. I think it's probably... Yeah, it's October 12th here in Europe. It's coming in October 7th in North America. So you are getting five days early. I'm not going to be jealous of it there because, again, I couldn't care less about the Pokemon games. The only two I have, I have is Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Platinum. So basically two kind of, you know, spin-off combined ones pretty much. Um, I don't know, like, have you ever played, have you into the Pokemon series whatsoever, Sammy? Well, I've the first one I ever played was uh, Pokemon Gold. And I actually, I think I was like 16 the first time I ever played it, and I was in the hospital, and my friend brought me his uh, his Game Boy and Pokemon Gold to help me pass the time. Um, and I got addicted to it then. Um, I'm playing an emulated version on the iPad now, but uh, I'm not really too hardcore into it. But um, on the topic of the names, I think they're just running out of colors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's going to be the, like Pokemon Turquoise, Chartreuse? Like? Yeah. Pokemon Aquamarine will be next and all that there. Just yeah, I think they are running out of colours pretty much. Like black and white, like that's really it. That's like what's going to be next indeed. That's that's pretty much why they have the sequel for both of these because they can't. What's going to be Pokemon Grey? Yeah. Fuchsia, Fuchsia or whatever. Fuchsia. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you, however you say that. <laughs> They'll basically be going to paint. They'll be going to you know, decorative stores and looking at the paint <laughs> colours and say, like, okay, right. What what what's going to work here on a Game, game box, Pokemon, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what they'll be going to, and be reduced to um, soon enough though, um, because they are running out of colours pretty much, uh, so yeah, I'm not really into the Pokemon series, I just feel they're pretty much the same time and time again, they just are about more, the same, yeah, more Pokemon, different, different um, region, a um, few little tweaks here and there, but it's pretty much like, you know, your typical sports game or whatever at this point, or Call of Duty or whatnot. Well, at least sports um, games are fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's debatable. <Yeah. laughs> well, certain sports games are fun. I'm not going to say all of them are. Yeah. Certain sure. certain ones are enjoyable enough, but other ones are like, nah. Mm. Um, and that is pretty much all, unless there's anything else that Jews have um, come up with. We're going to talk a little bit about Radical. Talk. Yes, you can talk a bit about Radical. I know you and Derek talked a bit about it, as you mentioned before, that Radical Entertainment is pretty much closed. Yeah. Which, again, it's a shame another studio is closed. That's like, yeah. it's not been long after 38 Studios and that had to basically shut its doors. And Radical, who did the prototype games, um, I, don't, I, I don't know what else they did. They did have uh, to the Simpsons Hit and Run, uh, Simpsons Road Rage. Oh right, they did. A couple of. I games. actually like. I actually like those games. <laughs> yeah, Crash Bandicoot games, a couple of them. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always the same to see them go though. Anyway, um, like I said, I I really do hate certain studios just basically bite the dust because just the, they just don't get the sales 
Yeah. The amount of money they put into them now. And so Prototype 2 didn't sell very well, I would guess. Probably not, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't Because I don't think that was a game a whole lot of people were looking forward to, though. It yeah. came at, like, the end of April, pretty much, and it's kind of maybe a bit of a, you know, dead season then afterwards. Mm-hmm. But, like, it, that didn't come out long after, you know, certain big games, like The Witcher 2 and games like that now. Yeah. I don't think... I think the first one was probably one of those kind of, you know, mixed games as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had the first one. I think, have you, I, I don't know if any of you played it now. Did you, any of you play the first prototype? No. I've played the first one. I enjoyed it actually a lot. So are you going to get the second one then, G-Course? Um, probably eventually. <laughs> it's not one that I'm going to, you know, rush out and get like today or anything, but Eventually, down the line, I'll probably pick it up. Yeah, I probably will as well, though, um, when it's cheap, which yeah. is kind of not to say, though, considering <laughs> the fact that the studio is closed now. But, like, I bought um, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckon, and I pre-ordered it. I got it when it came out, and kind of glad it did, though, because people are probably going now to the shops and seeing it for, like, $10 or something. Like, yep, get it now when the yeah, studio is dead, and I can get it for cheap. Yeah, I got it. Early. I got it when a little bit after it was released. I watched a quick look and I said, "Hey, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting that game. Looks pretty cool. It was fun." And he actually finished like the yeah, main quest. I yeah, <laughs> I have now. I, I, I don't think I'm anywhere near. I barely <laughs> touched the main quest. I've been. I don't know why I've been doing side quests. Oh man, no, it's like done the side quest in that game. Holy crap! I'm sure there's not as much as it was is in um, Xenoblade because Xenoblade Chronicles pretty much. Tops um, is the icing on the cake in terms of side quests. <laughs> Go and wa- let watch Let's Plays, watch all that stuff, and you'll basically be okay. Reckoning has no no shit on this here <laughs> because there's a lot of side quests. That's pretty much why I stopped bloody playing it because I didn't the gentleman's chance like I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. I had to stop playing it because there was just so many side quests. Every area you go, there's like 10, 20 million bloody side quests to do. Yeah. And they're just basically MMO kind of style quests. Like, kill X number of this monster, collect X number of this item. And mm-hmm. certain, sometimes you have to go to the back to the person to give it to you and um, complete the quest. And other times it just basically automatically does it once you've, you know, killed the monsters or, like, picked up the number of items or whatnot now. Yeah. Um, I'll probably play it again sometime in the future, but not now. Um, you have a way, you have a way, don't you, Sammy? Uh, did you have you have you any interest in seeing the Blair Chronicles? Um, I have a Wii, and I'm normally not an RPG fan at all, but everything I've heard about Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm definitely gonna have to get it. Yeah, it's a very it's a very well made game, though. I, I'm I'm not criticizing the game now. It's just basically if 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 you if you're not into your side quests, you're pretty much getting devoured, though. But, again, I could have just gone through the main quest, though. But then again, I think the thing is, side quests, you're very often in certain side quests so you can get XP. I love a lot of it quicker as well, because if you don't do that, you're just probably going to get pummeled yeah. at the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, a lot, a lot of people really do love that game. Like, it came out here last August, and you only got it a few months ago. Yeah. So you did. And I think these are getting the last story. It's coming out this month, I believe. We've had it for a fair few months as well. And it's a it's a Mistwalker game. Um, I've got it. If, for those who don't know, Mistwalker is the ones who did the um, Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey, which is one of my favorite RPGs of this generation. I couldn't um, get into that game at all. I tried so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. I just couldn't. The turn-based RPGs I just can't do most of the time. Yeah, like I can, I can see that their um, turn-based ones are not really for everyone's cup of tea. Um, I'm not a fan. I'm not really into. I like RPGs, but the ones I'm not into are the sort of strategy, tactical ones, like you know Final Fantasy Tactics and those kind of games. That, that and Disgaea. That there's like, no, it basically involves strategy. If it says strategy in the fucking sort of category, or that, I say, like, yep, I'm out. I, I don't like strategy games. So anyway, um, 
after that little tangent now, we're going into the <laughs> games we've been playing, and since um, Sammy is a guest and also a lady, ladies first. Go ahead, Sammy. Well, I guess I'll start off with the most recent. I was actually playing this this morning. Um, Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. That game is so freaking hard, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is pretty a pretty tough game. Like I got it when it came out um, in December 2010 and finished it. But yeah, I actually didn't find it as challenging as some people consider it to be until the last world. The last world is really fucking hard. Great. There's just certain levels in that are just really, oh my god, just basically rip your hair out. Frustration. Well, see, the the first game I ever completed was uh, Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. So when this came out, I you know it's kind of a nostalgic thing. I knew I had to get it, um, and I started playing it last night with to talk with my fiance, and I'm just getting my ass kicked. <laughs> I mean, we're on the uh, the ruins levels now, and I've I've noticed that I prefer playing as Diddy just because he seems to jump a little higher and he's easier to move. I don't know if that, that's just me or if that's, you know, actually the way that they're programmed. But, um, yeah, the, it's amazing how difficult the game was. I did not expect that at all. Yeah, I believe, um, I know um, Tim Jumble Junkie actually did some streams of it and I believe he got pretty frustrated at the game <laughs> as well. Um. I never watched them, no, but I, I, I probably would watch them on archive if they're there and pretty much would get the feeling, yep, yeah, that guy's pissed off. <laughs> yeah, but and you, playing co-op with someone and on a game like that, it's just going to make you hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I really, like, once they announced that, and, like, I think it was the E3 that year, and I was like, day one purchase, because yeah. I absolutely adore the Duncan Kong Country series and really... Retro did a great job on the, that reboot, pretty much. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful, too. But Donkey Kong have always been gorgeous. Go ahead. Um, And then I've delved into my, my summer backlog. I was kind of slacking for the, the first month or so. But I've hit it hard. I've um done a little bit in Mass Effect 2, which I, I wanted to complete that before I started Mass Effect 3, just to get, you know, the, the full story of the whole Mass Effect series. I like. I I I would be looking forward to hearing what you think of the ending in Mass Effect Three. <laughs> That's another thing that we we'll probably me and Dan should man talk about though. Maybe you know when we are talking about our games is like the the extended cut. Mm -hmm. Um, did you watch all of the extended cuts online, Dan? I haven't yet. No, I haven't uh, watched them all. I watched a couple of them, but not all of them. Yeah, I just basically watched them though because when I found out, he's like, "Yep." Yeah, if you want to actually get the extended cut, you have to actually play the game from the Cerberus part. It's like, yep, yeah, I'm not doing that again. Screw <laughs> that. Yes. No. I just, I just want to see what's, what's the difference, what happens, and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're all right. Quite the negative things about the the original ending in Mass Effect <laughs> Three. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've I don't kept away from you know reading any spoilers or anything just because I want to see it for myself, but nothing too good about it. Yeah, it's pretty much everyone just went apeshit pretty much. Uh, I think it's I, I assume I think it's probably the biggest bloody backlash to an ending since probably Halo 2. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Which I mentioned last time now, I believe, like the um, I didn't I wasn't really upset because the Halo 2 ending because I I finished it in like a month before the third one came out. Yeah. So everyone else was, you know, really pissed off because they played like when it came out, and they said, "Oh, we'd have to fucking wait another several years now for the third one." Exactly. So how far are you in Mass Effect Two? Oh gosh, and you're gonna ask me that. I am. I <laughs> fell asleep while I was playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that boring, eh? <laughs> well, no, it's it's not boring. It's just for some reason, I mentioned this on the Rad Rascals podcast, the first one I was on. Um, for some reason, the game, the Mass Effect games, just put me to sleep. Like, I enjoy them. I think they're fun, but I don't know if it's the colors or the sound or <laughs> or what, or the fact that I play them at, like, 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, maybe that. <laughs> well, that'll do something to you if you're playing them up that late. <laughs> but they just, they put me to sleep. Um, I think I've, I'm not very far in it at all. I think I've got one more person in the um, the original dossier um, missions to, to add to my group. So, yeah, I'm not very far at all. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's about like, maybe five, ten hours and maybe less, though. And yeah. then you can do, like, the loyalty missions in and 
The second mm. one's probably the best one, though, so I'm glad you're enjoying it anyway. It's probably the, it's the best one, in my opinion. Yeah, games, um, games like this, I'm, I'm a person where I want to see every little thing and hear every little thing in the game. So it's, it's going to take me quite a while. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I did everything. Now. I didn't do all like the side quests. I did like pretty much some of the side quests and did all like the Lloydy missions now because I wanted to get the best ending. Because you pretty much have to do the Lloydy missions yeah. and you have to basically boost your ship and all that there in order to like get all your crew members to survive the suicide mission. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day, did you um? I think you, I think, what, did any of your members die when you went through it, Dennis? Uh, first time, yes. Yep. <laughs> because I didn't cheat like certain other people in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> so, yeah, I had like three people die, and then uh, I, I replayed the game because I always play Mass Effect. Like the first two Mass Effect I played, I played twice. You know, like uh, Paragon and, uh, uh, what's the other one? Paragon and, um, yeah, so I, I played both of them. I, I usually play both of them. Well, I played the first two twice. Don't know if I'm going to do it for the third one because it kind of pissed me off. So I don't know if I'm going to go back to it. But, uh, yeah, so when I go, went through the second time, I looked online and I and none of my crew members died. So I cheated the, first, the second time, but not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically cheers. Like, okay, who's who's the best um, thing here to do? Okay, choose her, choose that, choose him or choose her or whatever. And it's like, okay, that's great then. No one's, uh, everyone, it's just, it's just, you can just go on YouTube though and there's certain parts though. You can actually, I think there's like one of the ends you actually, everyone can pretty much die. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, okay, hey, like that'll be weird. Like use that for your import save. You can't do that. Uh, your shepherd is dead. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Go back, to, go back and play Mass Effect Two again, and don't get him killed. But I think if he if he dies, I think you have to restart. You have to start a new guy, in the third one, mm. if you play it. So. Yeah, just basically they get his DNA or something and clone him. Yeah, probably. Because mm-hmm. that's pretty the kind of sort of the thing now. Um, are you Renegade or Paragon, Sammy? Um, I'm trying to be Paragon. But I don't think it's working out very well. <laughs> I tend to lean those... more towards the renegade choices just because they're they seem to be more entertaining conversation. That's true. That's true. Yeah, there's just, there's just certain. Yeah, I I'm always go paragon. I'm just basically goody two shoes. But there's certain times that those prompts come up. It's like ah, oh, too enticing to not depress it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like pretty much punching the guy. Uh, not punching the guy, but punching the um the reporter. reporters. Yeah. <laughs> That that uh, I was uh, Paragon pretty much, and when that came up, I couldn't resist, so I just yeah, <laughs> I just like, punched her. <laughs> just a screw you, it's like bomb. But it was okay yeah. because I had a, a lady shepherd, so it was a lady on lady. And I know not people really. I I don't know. I like a lot of people I know pretty much have played as the female shepherd. I've yeah. never done. I've always I always go with male characters. I don't know why. I just always went with I always went with um, male shepherd. I so the end of the day, female when I play. Uh, like I play one time male and second time female. So just to see the Man difference. Man to say I always play female, but I know my character German, so you know she's German shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, what else, what else have you been playing, Sally? Um, uh, another game in the, the backlog I've been playing is Mad World. Play it, you know, a short period of time at a time just to get, you know, a little frustration out, just to beat the hell out of people. Um, I'm in the, the Chinatown level now, so I think that's about halfway through, maybe. I heard the game was really short. Yeah, it's not a long game. It's probably around, like, you know, five, six hours, yeah. Yeah. Like, so I got it a few years back, and, yep, it's a great game. And the, I've said this multiple times, but I, I absolutely love the art style, very city-esque, so... Yeah, that's probably what draw me as well when I first seen it. I was like, yep, this game looks like Sin City. I loved Sin City, the film, so I'm definitely getting this game. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much the third, same thoughts. It was one of the reasons why I rebought a Wii, because I had a Wii when they first came out. It was bought for me for my birthday, which is in, uh, September 11th, and I ended up selling it by Christmas because there was just nothing out that I was interested in at the time. What year, what year did you get it? For, what year was it? Oh, it was the... The year after it came out, so whatever year oh, that was. Oh, seven then? Okay. 
Yeah. And uh, they were still very, very hard to find. And I just I happened to walk into Walmart of all places and they had they had just gotten the shipment in. So I picked one up and then promptly regretted it. But um, <laughs> after No More Heroes came out and Mad World and stuff like that, I, I decided I needed another one. But I, I've really enjoyed Mad World. I'm looking forward to completing it. It'll probably be the, the first game in my summer backlog that I will complete just because it is so short. I, I'm hoping I'll complete everything, but it's looking kind of kind of bad at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of slacking though. I already completed one game this year, uh, this year in the summer backlog. It's the Mirror's Edge, which <laughs> um, I've already shared my kind of thoughts on that in the previous episode. Um, I, I thought the game was good, but I, I don't see why everyone really loved that game. <laughs> Yeah, I've I just tried, I I just tried. completed it yet. I've played a few, and I'm just like, eh, it's all right, but. I just found it frustrating. There were certain parts in that game that I was part of. The, I was part of the first game in a while that actually really got me annoyed. It's like really got me frustrated. I can see that. But, yeah, but my, yeah, my world's a great game. It was, I think it was the first platinum game I played, and pretty much my love of platinum games pretty much just grew from there. And um. My sister came over one day last week, I think it was, and we played. She, myself, and my fiance played, busted out a uh, Mario Kart on the Wii, and had some fun with that. And the only thing I have to say is, fuck Rainbow Road. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think I remember. Like, yeah, that, that caution is a fucking bitch in that there one because there is a lot of there's no like there's a lot of points in that one. There's no barriers in the side. You can pretty much just fall. Easily, I seriously was falling off like every two seconds. Like it was, it just—I don't even think it let me finish the track. Yeah, like it just gave up on me. Like you suck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because if once someone finishes, I think he ordered like thirty seconds or something to finish the race before basically goes deep. Did not finish. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the Wii one. From what I can gather, I don't know why, because I absolutely love the Wii one. I, I just, like, when I got it, I played the online for it pretty much non-stop for, like, a week or two. And I absolutely love the online. And But a lot of people don't like it, though, for some reason. Um, what, what are your thoughts on it? I like it. Um, probably Mario Kart 64 is my favorite, just because I have a lot of memories playing that with my dad. Um, but I... Mario Kart uh, Wii isn't, it's not bad. Do you play with the nunchuck or do you play with just the Wii remote? I I got the Wii, atta- you know, the wheel attachment and yeah. pretty much the Wii remote the inside. I think that's pretty much what I played it with. And see, um, I can't do that for some reason. I have to play it with the nunchuck. I don't know if, for some, I just can't get the hang of the, the wheel. I don't know, right, maybe that's yeah. just me. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people just play with the, the nunchuck, and I think you can use the GameCube controller as well for it. I hmm. think you can, yeah. I didn't know that. I, I never play. I never played with that. I was <clears> pretty <throat> much the the wheel accessory you got with the game, and that's pretty much what I played it with all the time. Yeah, my, my, I just, I've tried it and just can't. I can't master the wheel. <laughs> yeah, my nephew. So my, my nephew has it, and. Uh, I played a couple of times, and I always use the wheel. <laughs> I, always, I can't play with the 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 controller. I have to to use the wheel. I have to feel like I'm actually driving the car. I don't know why, because I played other Mario Karts with a controller, so I don't know why I had to use the wheel for this one. Just make you more immersed into the game, pretty much, Dennis. Yeah, I, I, I play better also <laughs> when I do that. So. Maybe it's the fact that I'm just a terrible driver to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that might be the case. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the same night, we when we got tired of Mario Kart, we busted out uh, old school Mario Party 7. Oh. and played a little bit of that. And um, for some reason, the AI in Mario Parties have always just frustrated the hell out of me. Like, you can give yourself, like, a, a three-star handicap in the beginning, and somehow you're going to end up losing all your stars. The, and can the computer AI is going to take them from you. Like. That's pretty much kind of the same for most of those Mario games. Like Mario Kart ways, and Mario Kart games especially are kind of, you know, criticized for its rubber banding AA, where you can lead an entire race, you can be basically miles away, and all of a sudden, last lap, last lap of the race, blue shell, red shell, lightning, everything will just come up, up your ass, and you pretty much end up, like, in the bottom. And I, I, I believe me, I've had that, on a fair few occasions, and it's really annoying. Yeah. I think everyone just 
pretty much um, think the blue shell is pretty much the spawn of Satan, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and the, uh, the old Mario Party and Mario Kart games. I normally don't get frustrated at games, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last Mario Party game I played was like Faye for the GameCube. I think that's the last one I played. Yeah, Seven was on the GameCube. And we pulled out the old GameCube controllers and hooked them up to the Wii and played some old Mario Party. It was fun, minus the AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, it's, I think it'd be a lot better playing that game on a table anyway because it'd be a lot boring if you didn't. And I kind of <laughs> wish the latest ones were like had some sort of online though, but nah, it still probably wouldn't be the same. Well, I think the uh, they've made a very big mistake not not putting it online, just because I think it would be a, a lot of fun to play with people, you know, online instead of having to deal with the AI or having to try to drag three other people to play with you. Yeah, that's the problem I have though, because I basically most of my game and like in terms of like multiplayer stuff is online because no one around here. I know of plays games, therefore I play a lot. I play a lot with Dennis and a few other mm-hmm. people as well, and basically communicate with a lot of people on Twitter and out there, like yourself. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky with the fact that I live with with someone that's a gamer, and then my sister's a casual gamer, but she lives like 30 minutes away now. Um, and basically the other people I know that, that game, they don't. If they game, it's like something on the iPad or. Or you know, Call of Duty or something like that, which I've mm-hmm. I play Call of Duty every once in a while, but I'm not. That's not the only thing I play. Like a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me and Dad have our thoughts on Call of Duty. Yeah. We've shared them mm-hmm. um, quite a bit over the last several <laughs> weeks, though. So we're, we're, we're not pretty much. <laughs> we're not gonna get into yeah. that again. <laughs> we're not yeah. getting into that again. We said basically they're competent games, but there's just so bloody many of them, and they're just basically the same stuff. Year in, year out. Yeah, I agree. I'm still playing Black Ops. Like, I didn't even pick up Modern Warfare 3 just because Black Ops is enough for me. Yeah, so. very good game online. That one is uh, excellent online. That actually was pretty good online. That was probably the last good one. Yeah. And then again, I never touched the... Th- I already rented the third Modern Warfare 3, mm-hmm. so I did because I, I just didn't want to buy it. Yeah. I just so played the camp. We rented it when it first came out, and we are just like, why do we need to buy this? <laughs> <laughs> just played the campaign and then didn't even touch the multiplayer. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to play because I got the second one, Modern Warfare 2. I got the Hardened Edition, which was like, I think it was like 60 odd pounds because they're fucking Activision with their overpriced fucking Call of Duty games. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that, I got, and it was the Hardened Edition, it was like the, it was this little art book and you got a code for Call of Duty Classic, which was the first one on Xbox Live Arcade. Hold on a second, what, what, what the hell are you going to do with an art book for Call of Duty? <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering. It's, it's not one of those like you big ass, it's just like one of those little small hardback ones now. And that was, I think it was like a little art book or something. I think it was, I forget. Like I can, I I can I, understand RPGs or Diablo or something, but Call of Duty? I mean, yeah, Jeep. Uh, this old Concept art for the guns, Dennis. Oh, a lot of people okay. would really love that. I want to see my G36 or whatever, how it's done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we picked up the uh, the hardened edition of Black Ops. He wanted the prestige with the little RC car that had the has the yeah. video and sound. I wouldn't let him get it because I didn't think I'd ever get any peace. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, the, the hardened came, I think, with... Um, it came with like a, a medal of some sort and then a code to download all the, the classic zombie maps for free, which we play zombies a lot. So that was basically the reason why we got it. And then later for his birthday, a friend of ours who bought the procedure edition gave him the RC, RC car anyways. So. <laughs> Lucky bastard then. <laughs> Didn't have to waste like, was it $150? I think it was. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. <clears throat> I was working at GameStop when it came out and it was, shocking how many people ordered that and when the car came in now it was personally i think it's a cheap piece of plastic but he seems happy with it so <laughs> yeah I, I basically wasted, wasted the 60 odd pound on that hard edition because i got it when it came out and basically traded like a month later because the online <laughs> for that game was fucking broken <laughs> beyond True. belief i do not care there was people hacking <clears throat> yeah for the stage basically I think half the time I just felt like I got che- cheated out of kills or deaths and things like that. Mm-hmm. And that's like, I'm not touching the multiplayer. I, I'm not, I'm not going to touch the multiplayer and that again. I just, I played some of Black Ops, which was 
was some somewhat better though, but still like I'm not great at those games. So Battlefield actually, I'm pretty, I'm okay at, but Call of Duty is just not, no, not for me. Well, the more yeah, you I play, suck at it, but I still play it. <laughs> yeah, the more you play, the better you get. I played a whole lot of uh, of Black Ops. I know, I think you remember that, Darren. I used to, I think every night I used to play for a little while, maybe a month or a month and a half. Like every night I used to play Black Ops, and I. I I was getting pretty decent towards the end. I was getting yeah, to death, so yeah. I remember that? Yeah, I think you were tweeting about. It. It's like, yeah, I got, I got, got good kill death ratio to nine or whatever. Yeah, I remember you tweeting about that sometimes. Yeah, I did it like in one game. I did a twenty nine eleven game, like twenty nine kills, eleven deaths, and that was a highlight of my Call of Duty career, if I can say. But you, you still get, you still get the guys that go in there and finish with eighty seven kills and. Like seven five deaths. deaths. Or like that. Yeah, that that actually sounds like my fiance. He's pretty he's pretty damn good. But he used yeah. to back in the original Modern Warfare. He actually used to to play and get paid for it when we lived okay. in Virginia. So. All right. So basically, kind of a pro gamer thing there. Yeah. There. I I'm not, I think he was MLG. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but he's he hasn't been into it since I've known him. But he back in his his uh high school and right out of high school days he was. He was pretty hardcore. Now he just plays for fun, but he's still pretty good. I would guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and me and Dennis used to know a guy. You knew a guy as well. He was pretty, pretty good. Well, pretty damn good at modern warfare. Yeah. Basically, every time we played, we got sucked, and we were basically getting killed left and right. And he got like, yeah, I got 24 kills and two deaths. Yeah. How the fuck did he do? How the fuck does he do that? that I do not James know. James Logan, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. came home from work yesterday. He'd been playing, and he was like, I went 63-3. and three. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Anyway, what else we've been saying <laughs> after, uh, on a Call of Duty time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, two, only two more games, um, and they're both on the iPad. The first is actually an emulated version of Pokemon Gold. I'm um, not going to go too much into that because I'm sure everybody knows, you know, Pokemon games. But the cool thing about it is I found a way to connect my Wii remote to my iPad. So instead of having to play with the with the touch controls on the iPad screen, I can actually sit there and play with my Wii remote. I assume you're using some sort of, like, Bluetooth or something, is it? Right. Um, and I'm probably going to put up, like, a tutorial video on how to do that because you can actually connect your Wii remote or your PS3 remote to your iPad. Um, and it's actually really? pretty helpful, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, okay, uh, yeah, get that shit soon, off as soon as possible, because I'd be interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I don't record it tonight, I'm I'm off for a good part of this week, so I'll definitely have it up this week. Um, but yeah, I've, I figured out I could do that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to record this. What iPad I, have you got? The iPad 2. Okay, I've got the new one. So yeah, I got, I, it like last month. I got an amazing deal. We only got it for uh, $200. Whoa. And it was brand new. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that yeah. was, that was nice. Someone my uh, fiance worked with was able to, to sell us one because he had he had multiples. He's the owner of a, a big company, so he had multiples, and he was able to sell us one for pretty cheap. So. And then the, the final game is a, a little uh, iOS game called Montezuma's Aztec Treasure. It's kind of like a puzzle quest game where you match the colors and, you know, the the orbs or the jewels or whatever you want to call them disappear. And it's very, very addictive. It's very, you know, pick up and play if you're, you know, waiting in a waiting room somewhere or just you have a few minutes. Very, very addictive. I think it was actually, uh, I think Metal Jesus Rocks actually mentioned it in one of his uh, iPad game videos, and that's where I found it originally and downloaded it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've I, like, I seen it on the App Store. I haven't downloaded it, though, but I've seen it, though. Yeah, it does It does pretty much is like one of those, like, Bejeweled or, you know, Puzzle Quest, like you said. Yeah, I think the same people that made uh, Zuma on Xbox Live Arcade, if I'm not mistaken, they made that. And uh, I was addicted to Zuma a few years ago, and this has become my new addiction for the iPad. <laughs> There's always at least one game out there. A lot of people are angry birds. Other ones is like draw something or cut the rope. Yeah, I was addicted to draw something for a while. That's kind of gotten old recently. Yeah, I only did it with like one person though, or two people. And that's really it was all it. Like a lot of people I know have like 20 people on there. Yeah, I had it like was full one. all the time, and I was constantly getting 
you know, it's your turn, and so you and such and such has match, and it was blowing up my iPad and my iPhone. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Screw this. <laughs> but yeah, that that's about it for me. Yeah, you basically made me proud with the amount of games you've been playing, because <laughs> if you know, then I go uh, well as well. So, Dennis, I know you've actually already sort of talked about how the games you've been playing previously with Derek, but yeah. um, for those who probably might skip that episode with the shut now, but what have you been playing before you head on to the okay. to New Jersey, isn't it? Yeah, New Jersey, going down to Jersey. Um, not going to be in Jersey Shore or anything like that, just going on vacation uh, <laughs> for, for a little while. Um, uh, yeah, going for 10 days. I might actually download just to keep with the games thing. Uh, Got to download, um, uh, what's it called? Game, uh, game, de- not get game develop. Game dev story. Game dev story. Thank you very much. I was looking for the, the name. Game dev story. I'm going to probably download that. I played it last year. Really, really enjoyed that game. And I'm uh, going to download it for, for the trek uh, up there. And uh, back because I'm going to be driving maybe 50% of the way. So um, we, we sh- me and my father share uh, share the driving uh, the driving um, time. So gonna when he's driving, I'm going to be uh, either playing or listening to my new Nero album on my <laughs> on my uh, my uh, little uh, iPod. I know that Darren doesn't really like Nero, but <laughs> as he very uh, much explained to me before the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jokingly said a tweet term. He's like Nero. He's a bro fired. <laughs> jokingly, of course. Yeah, so Nero. For those who don't know, do they do the um, Borderlands 2 uh, trailer music? So the, those are the guys that do that. Uh, that that song is pretty amazing. I think it's the best one on the the album. But there's uh, other pretty good ones. Uh, anyway, going back into video games, I guess I played, um, I played some, uh, <clears throat> I've gone to the dark side, let's say, and I'm playing SimCity Social on Facebook. So, uh, I said I would never, ever, ever, ever play a game on Facebook, but, you know, <laughs> I got suckered into this, uh, this Yeah, game. pretty much, pretty much like I said, I never, ever joined Facebook, so we both, <laughs> yeah. uh, we both turned to the dark side in one way or another. Yeah, never say never, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, quote Justin Bieber. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, SimCity Social. Um, I love SimCity with all my heart. I love that game. I love the, the series. But uh, as you all know, this is a, a game made by Zynga. So that means if you want more energy, if you want more diamonds... You have to hassle your friends on Facebook, send them little uh, little requests. Hey, can you come help me get some diamonds in this game? And can you help me? And I am completely against that. Like I, I've accidentally sent a couple of them to my friends on Facebook, which I apologize very dearly to. But uh, I've sent a couple of them, and some of them replied back to me and said, "What the fuck do you want?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, well, sorry." <laughs> So, yeah, if you want to progress in the game, you have to hassle your friends, and I'm completely against that. The game is pretty fun. The game is fun. You know, it's SimCity, so it's pretty enjoyable, but the whole hassling your friends thing, I cannot endure that, so I won't be playing as much of this game. And I kind of wanted to download SimCity 4. Talked to to Darren about that yesterday. I said, I kind of want to download it because it's $20 on Steam with the... uh, the expansion pack and everything, so I kind of wanted to do that, but I kind of laid, laid laid off, laid back a little bit because I'm going on vacation, so I don't yeah, want to get into the get, whole. Uh, yeah, get addicted to it, and I can pick your parents, and I'll go, Dad, come on, <laughs> no, I'm staying here, screw the holiday, yeah, yeah. <laughs> screw it, I'm not going. <laughs> no, I kind of kind of um, maybe get it when I come back. I'll have a couple of days off when I come back, so. Maybe I will. We'll see down the line. I've also been playing uh, a little bit of Diablo 3. Uh, still loving that game. I know we're going to talk about our favorite games of 2012 thus far. And this one is at the very top for me. So uh, very, very good game. Uh, I can't stop playing it. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, I'm going to get the, you know, I'm going to get the Nightmare and play a little bit and stop. But <laughs> I'm still playing it. So uh 
it gets even better on Nightmare because you get better loot. And uh, the the enemies are a little bit harder to kill, so you get a bigger challenge, and there's more of them. So I think I think that it's the same levels, it's the same story. But I just hope you get better loot. I hope you don't get loot for fucking Demon Hunter and Witch Doctor or Plenty, because as I said before, that was the main problem I had with the game itself. Just you get loot for pretty much every other class but your own. But you still do, but less I think on Nightmare. You get more that's stuff good. for you, so that's pretty good. Then you get a whole lot of yellows. I got an orange yesterday, so that's pretty awesome. Um, still very much enjoying that game. Um, been playing some Walking Dead Episode 2. I actually uh, went online the night it came out, and I said, I'm going to play a little bit. I'm going to play, like, the first part and, you know, leave the rest for tomorrow. But I played the entire episode <laughs> in one night. So it's two, three hours later. <laughs> yeah, it, it is absolutely awesome. The second episode is awesome. I mean, there are very tough decisions you have to make. Um, and, you know, you're kind of stuck in between um, stuff. You have to, um, I don't know, you have to really decide what you want to do. And uh, tough decisions, uh, heartbreaking decisions. Uh, very good, very, very good um episode and for those who haven't played it yet darren uh you should <laughs> you should get on it it's very good i know you want to wait until all uh, yes i'll wait till all of them are right and then i can play them back to back like i did with back to the future last year which was definitely the right call <laughs> yeah well i think they're coming out like the last one's coming out in december so you have a while to yeah while fortunately. To... but uh very good uh we i talked with derek uh, in very very big detail about this yeah, in the our podcast yesterday we so still, po- spoiler fest pretty much then is it spoiler fest for uh, episode two but we do warn people not to to listen on it and it's funny because when I played uh, you know at the end they they give you like uh, your decision versus what other people decided to do for certain certain things. And everything was like split down the middle, 52, 48, 52, 48, or 51, 49. So uh, I was guessing not a lot of people that played it when I did. So because Derek played it on Friday night and he said it was more, you know, divided like 75, 25 or stuff, uh, stuff like that. So uh, for those who, who it's not at all like the television show, it's more like the comic books. So if you enjoy the comic books, uh, which I haven't read, but anyway. Would you build it? Well, I assume you would do, would you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into it when I finish the uh, the uh, Game of Thrones thing. So um, so uh, I'm going to get into that uh, maybe later. Who knows? Uh, Game of Thrones is pretty pretty long to, to read. So we'll see down the line. Um I've also been playing, what is there, uh, FIFA 12, I guess, with the Euro Cup. Got into that a little bit more. I started playing, yeah. so, uh, played a little bit of that. Um, still a pretty good game. I, I enjoy it. Um, I'm a big sports video game guy, so except for Madden, which I cannot, for the life of me, play. Because I <laughs> love football at all. So, um, yeah, so very much enjoyable FIFA uh, and MLB 12 which is another sports game uh, which I talk about all the time I played a little bit of that so we'll get into detail about that one so that's pretty much what I've been playing so yeah. okay thank you very much Dennis um, finally myself though and um, probably not as much as previous week so he's can um, relax there now um, but I have played a few games since it's only been like a week since we did our last podcast, pretty much. Mm-hmm. The first game that I want to talk about is Ratchet & Clank HD from the Ratchet & Clank trilogy, which came out on the PS3 here this week. Um, so it did. And for some reason I do not know, you guys over in North America are not getting it until September. And that sucks. This is, yes. But you can always import it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I do not know for the life of me, though, why you're not getting until um, September at the latest, because um, 
I uh, absolutely love the Ratchet and Clank series. I've got all of them pretty much. All I got the PSP spin-offs. I've got all of them on the PS2 and PS3. And I just wanted to get this one anyway because I just wanted to go back and play through the first several again because I really did enjoy them though. And played about maybe a good number of hours of the first one and really enjoying it though. Like the like the, the HD upgrade like the looks nice though. Um, it's not like a fast improvement, of course, though. But if you if you want to play, if you just really would like the you know shininess and just really want to play them in a sort of different perspective, or if you ever played any of the games before, definitely get this um, trilogy set if you're in Europe, and if you're in the US and Canada, you can either a wait till September, October, or whatever, or b import it. Um, you've played. I assume you've played the. Ratchet and Clank series, then, have you? I have played all, uh, all except for the most recent two. Clank is one of my favorite video game characters ever. Um, if you watch some of my like original, older videos, you'll see that I actually have a, a stuffed Clank that a lady custom made for me quite a few years ago, and that's like one of my prized possessions. So I am a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. Yeah, so you haven't played a crack of time on all for one then, if I take it. Um, no, not yet. Um, I recommend a crack in time. It's definitely a great one, though. Um, a lot of people, for some reason, prefer the first one, the Tunes of Destruction, mm -hmm. um, for the PS3. Um, I enjoyed the second one more, because the clank puzzles in it are brilliant. The, the, the whole time manipulation thing are really excellent, though. And I'm sure you can pick it up on the cheap now, since it's like... I think it's over two and a half years old now at this point. Yeah, I've got a, a long list of games I want to get, and that's pretty much at the top of it. Yeah. Um, I actually played all for one. I forgot to put it down here now as well. I played, like, the, for the first level in it, and that's pretty much really different from the previous because basically kind of multiplayer-focused, and I know a lot of people weren't really... didn't curve too much for it, though, now. I played it, though, and like, it's, it's still kind of the same sort of Magic Clank style, though, but... I could see why people not really fussing this, so it's not really that um, it's a bit different to um, play, though. And the thing is, well, of course, again, I can't play online because I need to have a network pass. Yay! <laughs> um, because I already rented it out now from a service I get here, and, of course, if I want to play it online, I have to get the network pass, um, which pretty much, I think, is for every bloody game night online, with it on PSN at three this these days, and um, which kind of sucks though. But eh, it's good. It's good anyway. I sweat this back to Skyrim because there's a certain DLC that came out last week called Dawn Guard. Uh, I downloaded it, so I did, and like didn't even play too much of it now because I had to play my other, the main game for a while before I actually got a point two game actually can trigger that because it doesn't like automatically pop up. You have to go to like a guard told me about it. Basically about the Dawn Guard group and then I had the and then the quest came up there and I could say, okay I can go here now. Um so I didn't haven't really played too much of it though of that there quest line so I can't really give my impressions of it though. But as I said, Skyrim, absolutely love Skyrim, it was my favourite game of last year. Um so I'll probably talk a bit more about it though in like the next episode because I'll probably be playing it over the next few weeks anyway. Um, Diablo 3, Dennis mentioned, played some co-op with him, and he finished off his second character in um, normal mode, the monk. Mm -hmm. um, so I did, and it's, a, it's, a, it's still a great game. It's definitely one of my favorites as well. Um, again, probably very few people I've ever heard of, Noi to Love 2 Devolution. I take it you've probably never heard of that game. No. Um, it's, it's, it, I got on this, um, you know all those like, indie bundles that keep popping up every now and again? I got, I think it was like the Indie Royal one. I think it was like last month or maybe the month before. I got it along with a few other games like Pe Pixel Junk Eden and Auditorium and sort of like other indie games. And it's this kind of like games, like this sort of action side-scrolling platformer game. It kind of reminds me of certain like um if you ever played the Astro Boy Omega Factor game on the GBA, it has that similarity. 
So if you really if you like that game, then this is a great game to check out now. And really did enjoy it. And um, like Sammy, I pretty much played a bit of um, iPad stuff. I got a, I downloaded a game called Brand New Boy, which was on sale. And it's a very interesting game now. It's just basically this kind of beat em up sort of game. It's kind of this, like rhythm thing because you have to sort of time your presses to get like bigger combos and things like that now. It is kind of, you know, Japanese inspired because like the characters and it look like anime pretty much. Um, so I recommend you check it out, Sammy. Um, I think it's on sale at the moment. Okay, you said it was brand new boy. Brand new boy, yeah. Down. So if you, you should check that out though, anyway, because like I think I watched a video of it online and said like this looks good, and I think it was like sixty nine p. So I think it was like I don't know if it's still on sale, but I got it for that, so it'd be like ninety nine cents for use. I dabbled a bit into a very old PC game and video game called Wing Commander 3 Heart of the Tiger, which I know <laughs> Dennis played, didn't you? Yep, played that one. Uh, it was mainly because he was t- telling me about it there, I think last week. Mm-hmm. You should watch the random PC game video on Jam Bomb. I watched some of it. It looked interesting to say the very least. It's basically MFE stuff in its heyday because we know the early 90s had full of those games. Yeah. Like, you know, the Mad Dog McCree, Wing Commander, you know, Night Trap, Cirrus Shark, all those, um, yep. quote unquote, great games. <laughs> um, I played a d- bit of it, looked interesting indeed. Um, I, I think I'll probably I have to get a joystick though because playing it with the mouse is kind of troublesome. And I know Dave on the video had trouble playing it with the mouse. Yeah. And I can definitely see why because definitely playing it with the mouse is not the best method. It's tough. Yeah, I tried it with the mouse. Played like the, I just played like a trading mission or two. I was like, yep, yeah, nope. I'll just get a joystick for this and probably get one soon enough, like sometime this month or next month at the earliest. Um, Okami then, which is the follow-up to Okami. Um, have, did you ever play Okami then on the DS, Sammy? I have not. Um, I um, yeah, I play. I play like each night at work though for like thirty minutes or so. I'm not really that far. It's one of my summer backlog games, so it is. It's pretty much the one I'm kind of been playing at the moment though. It's it's a great game. So it looks it just looks good on the DS as well. Of course, it's not gonna look as good as its console counterparts now because it's on the DS. But I still love the art style, the sort of water con- color painting style in that game though. And if you loved Okami, then you're pretty much gonna like Okami then yeah. at the end of the day. I remember when it came out, and I just it was one of those that oh I need to pick that up, and then a little bit down the road I actually forgot about it. But it's come back to my radar recently, so. The main problem I have with it as well, I want to get, I don't know, I didn't pre-order though when it came out last year though. I, I said I wanted to go in and get in store and nowhere around here had it. I looked everywhere for it and I was really annoyed. I was like, great, can't find it anywhere. I had to go on. And it was like actually pretty hard to find it online as well after it came out because nowhere had it. Amazon didn't have it. eBay didn't have it. Mm. So it was pretty, for some reason it was kind of a bit of a rare game though. But like I didn't, you didn't like go on eBay and say same one selling for like you know twice the price for it. Now it's just, it's just one of those games wasn't around though. But eventually I got a, I got a copy of it though. I actually rented it first. I played a bit of it. I get like, oh I'm just gonna buy this then, and then I bought it from a guy on YouTube called Mike um, Aerodynamic. Um, if you know his channel, check it out. Um, basically I'm fucking plugging everyone <laughs> in this bloody podcast. <laughs> I should call it the plug-in podcast. You're the Mick Foley of the uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does, does definitely check it out, though, at the end of the day. Um, I finished Syndicate, which I really liked. Um, I haven't even played the co-op yet. Yeah, I watched your tweets. You, you seem to have really loved this game. I really did enjoy it though. Um, I didn't expect to enjoy it. I just 
I, I absolutely quite liked a lot of it, though. I love the set look of it, like I mentioned last time. Mm-hmm. I just love the whole cyberpunk feel of it. Yeah. I loved the gunplay. Just just playing again game, the, the gunplay, like running up the guys and doing the melee executions on them, just felt so refined, just yeah. so awesome to do. It was a pretty good like I, Like, I just loved doing that, just like shooting guys and running up to them and then just like melee execution, like just go and break their necks or whatever, or whatever execution it did, though, and some of the powers are cool. How did you like, find? How did you find the final uh, boss fight? I wanted to get the achievement. Mm-hmm. There's an achievement yeah. in it though that you had to def- kill the two guys, the two agency was with yeah. before uh, before they regenerate. You mean the two girls he's with? Oh, two girls, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Basically, you had to kill them because he was on this lift, wasn't he? Like elevator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had to kill these two girls before they regenerate to get this achievement. Mm-hmm. That was the problem. I was trying to do that. Kept getting killed there. Took me several goes. And then basically once I did that, I killed them first try. No problem whatsoever. Mm-hmm. The, fir- the first part was the hardest. The trying to get the achievement was the hardest part compared to the, the actual boss fight itself pretty much. Yeah. But I, I, re- I really did enjoy that game. It really... I really did enjoy it. Love the game, gunplay, gameplay. Love the look of it. Uh, it's probably one of my surprises of this year thus far. I quite liked it. Quite liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to play some co-op with you probably tomorrow. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, um, tomorrow. So. Well, if, mm-hmm. I, if anyone's around as well, definitely have to try it. Um, so I do. And finally, I got this game. Less, I got it on Friday. Well, actually. Got it yesterday, the actual game case itself, though, but actually went online to my account and seeing that the download for the early access was available, so I downloaded it and downloaded the rest of the game, and that game is The Secret World, which I talked about a, w- a few episodes back on the beta, so I did. It's this um, MMO by Funcom, and I think it's like the, t- in the people who beat it, The Longest Journey, and... Um, Dreamfall, and also I, think I have them. I, that's good. Uh, I have them, but I haven't played too much of them though. So it's basically, I think it's from the same guy. I forget his name though. It's a, it's a real hard to pronounce game though. Hard to pronounce name. Sorry. Um, it's basically I mentioned it before. I talk about it a bit. It's basically this MMO. So again, put people off there immediately, but. You know, MMOs kind of, you know, either like they're set in medieval fantasy or whatnot, or, you know, futuristic sci-fi or whatnot, like that there now. This one's a bit different and that's set in the modern day, pretty much current modern day, and you actually explore real world locations. Like you can go, you start off in um, a starting area, and then you go to this little place, this like a portal place that you can transfer to different areas. Like, I started off in Brooklyn uh, with my character. Because there's three factions you can choose from. You can choose from the Illuminati, the Dragons, or the Templars. And whatever one you choose, you actually start off a different um, start off a different city. Like, if you're the Templars, which is the one I had in the beta, you're in London. The Illuminati, you're in Brooklyn. And the same Dragons, you're probably in Tokyo or something. And then you basically go to this portal lane and you explore, you go to this place called Kingsmouth then, which I think is in, um, I don't know if it's actually a real place, it's basically in America somewhere anyway. And you can actually travel other places as well later on, you go to like to Egypt and Transylvania and other places like that though, which I'll be looking forward to trying out. Um, I really like this game. I don't know why, it just has a certain je ne sais quoi, but I quite like it. Now, just the fact is, it's something different for me, because as I said, you just get your standard fantasy, sci-fi MMOs, and this is sort of different, though. Basically, you're like in current day clothing. You go around bashing zombies up, pretty much it is, so that might, uh, that might appeal to you, Sammy. Hmm, yeah, as soon as you said zombies, I my ears perked up. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much like... Um, not in any of the area, but once you get the King's Mouth there, you fight these like zombies pretty much. And like the area you explore kind of reminds you of Left 4 Dead. 
So it do, so it I'm is. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty much like that though. And the th- good thing about this as well, it's not your typical leveling up now. Like you choose a class, and it's like, oh, I have to choose this class now. I'm stuck with this class. I have to level up this class. You pretty much can sort of branch your own way, own path. Like you can use like shotgun mainly, or your assault rifle, or you can use like these elemental magics, which I'm using at the moment. So and then you can level up that stuff. But you can actually sort of you know if you said oh, I'm not really fussing this element stuff, I can just go and like you know probably level up like the other stuff then as well. So you can basically switch your sort of playing style at any time pretty much, which is nice. And it's a, it's 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 a nice it's kind of a nice looking game though. Will it be playing it for months on end? Probably not though. But at the moment though, I'm really enjoying it though and um. I think it's a pretty big download though because the f- when I got the beta, it was 11 gigs. When I had to download the rest of it, it was 6.50 gigs. So basically about 17 odd, 18 odd gigs overall, which I assume is probably the total package though. But definitely you should check it out. Definitely check it out if you're interested though. Um, the Secret World, which is out, in- it's out this week. I, th- I assume it's out this week everywhere, though I got the say I pre-ordered, so I got the early access, so, so. Now, is there um, a monthly subscription, or since it's an MMO? Unfortunately, there is a monthly subscription, but of course, with MMOs, there's just three thirty 30 days. And I actually might have an actual code to this give you, or someone out there, because I actually got a couple of codes. Like, I got a pre-order code when I pre-ordered the game. I used it to set up my account and then I got another one so I did and then I actually have another one now with um, with the game itself so I don't know if actually those key, keys could work now I could give them away or whatnot for like the 30 day trial or whatnot but thing is if you have to you're going to have to download the game and if you have a crappy connection it's going to take a while <laughs> yeah so that's probably what put you off there so set it up to download and then go to work <laughs> yeah like what's what what speed do you get? I don't even know. That's I don't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's not as bad as me though, because I know Dennis has like you know, yours is a good speed, isn't it, Dennis? Yeah, thirty, thirty something, thirty two, thirty four. Yeah. <laughs> well, basically, yeah, that's nothing compared. Like I've pretty much twice that. I pretty much have like the the pretty much the fastest broad most nearly the fastest broadband you can get at the moment, pretty much. So my games can download. Just like that, pretty much in an instant, in certain cases. Um, but like, uh, I'm not going to go on there and rambling your heads off now. He's probably half asleep now. But that's pretty much all I've been playing, though. Like, check some of those games out. Sacred World, I really am enjoying, though, and Syndicate. I'll probably talk a bit more about in a few moments' time. So anyway, we're going into this topic now. I decided to set up a topic now. Since the year, half the year is over now, this is um, July, we're into July territory now. And we'd like to discuss sort of our favourite games of 2012 thus far. And I think unfortunately for Sammy, she won't be saying a lot of input in here because I believe she only played the one game this year, isn't that right? Yeah, and it wasn't the best of games. I mean, it was a game that not a lot of people liked. I enjoyed it but it didn't get very good reviews or anything like that, so. And what game is that? That was uh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. No. Right. It was not a Resident Evil game by any means whatsoever, but it was enjoyable, at least to me. I never played it, though. I, I know a lot of people, I think I think it might be one of those games, I think some people actually like it, but other people, like, really hate it, though. It's pretty yeah. much more of a... It's more of like a Gears of War type game instead of a Resident Evil game. I think would yeah. be the best way to describe it. Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much what I saw from like the footage I've seen of it, though. And um, no, I never, I never touched it though, and no, Dennis didn't touch it. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan. Me neither. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't really, I'm not really into the original ones, like the fixed camera angles. Like, I really liked four. I love four. Five, I thought was all right, but a lot of people like it. I don't. A lot of people really like five. I I I thought it was like okay at best, and six. Um, 
I don't know what your what your take on six is now, Sammy. What I am is it? Very excited for six. That's one of my most anticipated games coming up, which I know we'll get into more later. Um, four, I absolutely loved the original. I have played that multiple times. Um, but five, it was more of an action movie than a horror game to me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Because when from four, the onwards have gone into this more sort of action, right? Pretty much. Like four had more of a still had sort of its survival horror elements pretty much, but um, five kind of went more action based yeah. and I don't think a lot of people really like that. And six, <laughs> kind of what I've seen kind of feels the same way, especially with it's going with the QTEs. So it is pretty much from what I've seen on the Microsoft press conference, which <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember your appearance on the Operation Kill screen and everyone had their. <laughs> there are really, um, quote unquote, great points about that conference. The yeah. less about it, the better, pretty much. But um, yeah, Resident Evil Six. I'm not really, not sure about it though at the moment. Will you be picking it up, Dennis? Uh, well, I've checked it. I mean, I've I've seen the the demo and everything. Uh, it doesn't look like Resident Evil to me. Like, yeah, there's you know Chris and uh, and all those guys in there, but I. I it doesn't look like Resident Evil. It looks like more of an action game than, I guess, Resident Evil 5 or 4 were. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan. I played... I didn't... I haven't... The only Resident Evil game I played is 5. So, uh, so I didn't really... I mean, I didn't really enjoy it because the whole stop-to-shoot thing... Oh, uh, Yeah doesn't really appeal to me, so um, I didn't really enjoy it, so I don't know, maybe I'm keeping an eye on it, maybe, who knows, maybe a rental or something. Demo is out soon, if you have Dragon's yeah. Dogma, I believe oh. it's this week or soon enough anyway, it's this month anyway, if you have Dragon's Dogma, which I have, which I might, I might check out the demo one, it might sell me, it might not, Just I'll, I'll, I'll probably let you know, it's probably time the next podcast comes about. Right. Um, so <laughs> listen out for that. Um, but anyway, that's all you've been, that's all you've played this year. So this is pretty much going to be me and Dennis <laughs> going gaga over certain games and Sammy yeah. um, specifically going. But we we can come back to you. Just make sure you're alive. Just make sure you're still there. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy taking notes and and listening because it's been a it's been a very retro year for me. I've bought a lot of retro games. Just the newer ones. I'm not. I can't afford sixty bucks a pop right now. <laughs> I, I can, I, I can definitely, no, I can, yeah, that's definitely the reason I can definitely, you know, say that now because I can't afford like loads of games either. It's like, do like, I want a wedding dress or do I want a game? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think, I think one um, pretty much is more important than the other at this moment in time for you. <laughs> Yeah, like, I haven't bought as much games as I have over the past few months as compared to before. Like, if, if I don't know if you ch- know my channel on YouTube now, Sammy, but there's certain videos on there that I have basically a tar full of games <laughs> for pickups. <laughs> but not not really over the last few months now. I've pretty much been quiet, though. It's basically if I don't do, like, a picked up video for several months, I tend to have basically the leading tar of a piece of terms of games <laughs> at the end of the day, so that's pretty much it though but anyway Dennis you and I can talk about some of our games that um, have really we've enjoyed a lot this year thus far and we could probably go on we could probably talk about the first one which both of us played a lot of and that is of course Diablo 3 yeah (laughs) I guess uh, well it's my favourite game of uh, of 2012 so far Uh, of course Borderlands 2 is going to come out at the end of the year so who knows but uh, yeah, that's the game I spent the most time playing this year so far. Uh, love the game, still love it. Um, not sure I'm gonna get to, uh, Hell. I, get, I think Hell is the highest, uh, difficulty level. I think Hell and Ennis, I think it's Inferno actually. But I think okay. Inferno is the highest difficulty. Okay. I could be completely wrong there though. So I, w- I won't get to the highest, of course, but, uh, you know, I'm still, still enjoying it. Probably gonna go through Nightmare. And who knows, maybe the, the the other one, the other difficulty level. But, uh, yeah, that's my my favorite game of the year so far. Uh, I played the most of that game. So, so the same. Yeah, you probably, you played through the game, you played through the game twice, so, so that's basically, 
good good indication of a game you really really like. Yeah, I can look at my uh, at my Raptor here and tell you uh, how long I've been playing this game. But yeah, I think it's been uh, it's been the longest the the game I played the most of this year, uh, and my favorite, of course. So if I take a look here, I've played. 93 hours of Diablo, so. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, that's my my highest. And I'm still second on my friends list. So mm. I have a friend I have a friend who's played it 149 hours. So. Was this the same? <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy Is who this... took three weeks off. Yes. To play, uh, Diablo yeah. 3, so. The guy took all of his holidays for the year yep. to play Diablo 3, which I do wow. not care whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, he did that. He took uh, his entire uh, bank of vacations just to play Diablo 3. So. And what would have happened if he ended up not liking it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He probably would have regretted I, 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 it. He probably, probably would have wrong and worked. It's like, can I, can I, can I um, change my mind? I yeah. want to come to as soon as possible. And he's the guy who does the uh, overnight shift, so uh, we had to replace replace him while he was gone, so... Yeah, it was a very three, uh, tough three weeks, but, you know, now he oh, doesn't cool. have any more vacation until the end of the year, so. At least oh, uh, I can, I can vouch for, oh, he's a, oh, he's a fellow night shift brethren, and <laughs> Yeah, he's a fellow night shift brethren, so, now he won't have any vacation left, so he's going to have to suffer through uh, the rest of the year, <laughs> I guess. I could not do that, though, like, I, as I said, I booked the week off last year for Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Did you ever book um, any time off work, Sammy, for a game? Well, um, no, and now I'm actually pretty pretty lucky in the fact that I co-own a business, so if I want time off, I'll just take it. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool, then. Yeah. Uh, um, what is the business, if, I'm, if you don't mind me asking? Well, it's an antique store, but the easiest and best way to describe my job, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show American Pickers at all. Yeah. Um. The the female on there, Danielle, that's pretty much my job. I pretty much do exactly what she does. Okay. So, I uh, I don't know. I I never <laughs> seen the show, so I I um I pretty much buy the merchandise, you know, set up the merchandise, make contacts, um, run the retail store, stuff like that. So it, it's a very very fun job. And it's it's even better when I open a random box and find like crazy vintage video game stuff. Like I opened a box the other day and found, I think it was 49 new in box Atari 2600 uh, rapid fire adapters. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically it, opened a box off, like, yep. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and it was marked like video stuff or something. And I opened it and I'm like, holy shit, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice find there pretty much. That's cool. Uh, Yes, that is pretty cool indeed. Um, so yeah, that's basically three weeks off. Yeah, that's not same. Yeah, I get six. I get. I have six weeks off for the year. So I do. <laughs> which is a lot. Is a lot more than the American average, I believe. Yeah, I think Derek gets one. Week. Derek gets two, two weeks, weeks a year yeah. for a year, which I think is absolutely horrible. Yeah, I think yeah, that's I about average in the U.S. So that sucks, yeah, I get like six weeks off here pretty much. Like that's it's basically the, the number I've got like a number set a number of hours and pretty much it sort of equals to six weeks. Because I work four nights a week um at Sainsbury's, which is the supermarket chain here, and therefore like work four nights a week, thirty nine hours. So and my holiday's coming up soon though, know, so I can do plenty of podcasts and then pretty much Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Anyway, get back on the subject at hand. We, we talked about Diablo there. One of my games, pretty much I think is my favourite game this year thus far, is a little game that I think a lot of people really loved. And you wouldn't expect it though. The fact is, it's a game you can finish in like less than two hours. It's a PSN exclusive. It's by the same people that did Flow and Flower. Okay, I know. And that is a Journey. Mm-hmm. This game... I don't know why, it just blew me away, it just so, I just don't know how I can explain it though, it's a certain game, I think it's just basically a game you have to play for yourself, in order to get its charm, like, basically, all you really do is travel to this, like, mountain area though, that's pretty much the objective of the game, 
going through this like desert area and these like temples and things like that though. Mm-hmm. But the whole just sort of look of it, the feel, it's just something about it just really astounds me though. And like the end of it though, just something about it, just, I don't know why, it almost actually brought me to tears the end of the game. It's just something powerful about it though. And I, I just, I, I, I just, nothing thus far has actually come close to that game. And it may not actually end up being my game of the year, which would be pretty surprising to say the very least. But I, I, there is a few games coming, which I'll talk about soon enough, though. But Journey is just one of those games I just absolutely love, though. It's, it, it is, it is a, like, it's like, I think it was £10, $15. Some people are like, uh, why do why I want to pay this? I want to get like two hours, really. I don't care. I, I felt my money was justified. Absolutely love that game. Um, definitely pick it up though um, for the amount of money you get it might be on sale sometime soon you never know you get it then if it is but it's a really really wonderful game what other games Dennis have you played and have enjoyed this year uh, I have. I absolutely have to talk about uh, Binary Domain uh, this is a game that came out of nowhere absolutely nowhere for me and I I didn't expect to like it. I mean, I, I saw the quick look on Giant Bomb, and I said, well, yeah, this looks pretty interesting. I went out, I bought it for $20, which was even better. Like, I found it for $20, and that was fantastic. Brought it home, played it, and absolutely loved that game a whole lot. It's, I mean, it's a shooter. Yes, it's a cover-based uh, third-person shooter, but um, I guess it's very different in the way that you have a lot of uh, uh, conversations with your uh, your partners in the game, and you, you have a lot of uh, um, interaction with them, and that makes the game really, really good. Uh, Big Bow, which uh, you know they've you've heard a lot about it when in the uh, the Giant Bomb Quick Look, like um, Jeff makes a lot of fun of that, but you know it's and the other characters in the game, which it's, it's very interesting. It's very Japanese, so. <laughs> of course, it's done by the same people that did Yakuza. So if you like the Yakuza games, you probably would like this. Yeah, it's it's a very 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 good shooter. I really enjoyed it. Um, the story was great. Um, the interaction is very uh, with the characters is very good. Uh, the shooting is very solid also. So uh, if you're into shooters and you want something different from the Call of Duty, Gears of War, uh, and Bonanza out there, uh, I can I recommend you pick it up. I know, Darren, you played it. You had uh, I really need to get back into that game because I think it stopped after, I think it was Chapter 2, so it was. Yeah, it gets really good. At the end, it's very, very good. The ending is great. But, I, I did, yeah, I really did enjoy it, though. It's a really... Because you actually use the voice. You can actually use the headset. It's, like the, <laughs> the, it's yeah. not the Kinect now. There's no Kinect voice. It's actually the old headset you use. It doesn't work very points. well. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Yeah. So don't try and... It probably works about 50, 60 percent of the time. Yeah, maybe if if even that. So. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but that's that's definitely a game to recommend. Like I got it for pretty cheap as well. I got it for like th- twelve, thirteen pounds. So I did new. So. Yeah. And that wasn't long after it came out either. But definitely, definitely I, worth. I money. think it was a forty dollar game when it launched. So. It, it wasn't full price. I think it was forty dollars. So. But very, very recommendable. Very good game. Okay, another of my favourites is um, Azura's Wrath. Yeah. <laughs> which, again, a bit of a surprise. But this was a game I was looking forward to for a while, ever since I've seen the first footage of it, like I think it was last year. And uh, it's basically looked like Bayonetta. It looked like the, the old battle, like the battle thing, and all the whole over the top stuff looked a bit like Bayonetta to me. I was like, yep. Yeah. This is my kind of game. And I seen footage of it and then like the demo came out and some people was like, Oh, it's basically Q T E fest which I I, I I like QTEs. I know a lot of people hate the look hate hear that every time someone mentions QTEs, the pretty much a big turn off for them in terms of playing a game. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> but I I've always liked QTEs ever since playing like Shenmue. On the Dreamcast, pretty much kind of where I start with the sort of QT sort of. Unless you can't, you know, those, you know, Dragon's Lair and those old 
games on the Sega CD, of course. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like you know the actual button press on screen, um, that's what pretty much Shamu I think kind of the one introduced me to that. Though I pretty much enjoyed them ever since. And this game was just absolutely nuts. So, um, it has its it has its first share of QTEs, but the stuff happening on screen when you're doing them are just absolutely awesome. You have to fucking I want to do this just basically make them go more powerful and make them grow like 50 million arms and. Absolutely crazy crap like that though. Mm. Absolutely, just a really great game though. Like again, I got a game I got for cheap. I actually didn't get it though at launch. I was, but I cancelled it because I think I already had too much of that month. So I did. I already like had a few games already and pre-ordered, so I just kind of left it aside. But I got it back a few months ago and really enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. um, it's a really nice game. It's basically Capcom. And CyberConnect 2. So it has its share of QTAs, um, kind of this brawler, being a month kind of sort of part, and uh, like on rails, shooting like, you know, pa- kind of Panzer Dragoons that died. Um, really, really fun game though. Um, just some of the crazy shit that happens. Like I mentioned before, your guy gets stabbed, fucking with a sword, it pretty much travels, it goes through the entire planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You, you pretty much a guy. You get flattened by this guy. Pretty much over. Pretty much grows up to this giant dad's like deity and pretty much squashes you with his finger. You're pretty much like a fucking little wee like a mole, pretty much. <laughs> um, the size of it though, and there is DLC for it. I got the part four DLC because it's pro- actually the kind of true ending, the finale of the game, which. A lot of people will probably be like, for fuck's sake, I have to buy this in order to get the true ending to the game. I thought it was worth it. The final part in that there is just epic. It's just absolutely epic, though. You're pretty much fighting this giant ass sudden like, thing and just traveling in space. It's just absolutely awesome, though. Really, really love that game. But you, I know, um, you did say um, uh, it was Capcom, right? Yeah, Capcom and CyberConnect 2. So that's why you had to pay for the true ending. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had to download it. Pretty much. <laughs> I used to love Capcom. They've let me down quite re- quite a lot recently. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I can see why everyone not doesn't really like them now, because they really do ch- go the whole DLC right. And t- when it comes, definitely when it comes to the you know, the Street Fighter now, mm-hmm. because every bloody time it's new Street Fighter, like, Update comes, they always put like fucking costumes for every single character. I'll just so go much Marvel versus Capcom. I'll just say that. Just put that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bingo. <laughs> Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom fee. Yeah, it came out what nine months or something. Yeah, Eight, nine months after the first one. Yeah, a new game, same game, but with you know different layout, a couple of new characters. So. Some new characters and little tweaks here and there. When I saw that, I said, yeah, yeah fuck you, Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky bastard. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, as I said, like, there's other ones. There's DLC there as well for, like, these sort of these, an- like, interactive anime kind of cutscenes, like, animated cutscenes. Mm-hmm. But I always just, I just watched them online. Because I wasn't going to pay for them now. Yeah. Because they, they take, like, they kind of take place between certain episodes. Okay. So one of them's like episode eleven or something, eleven point five or something. So between like what happens between episode eleven and twelve, then if you want to, I just went online and watched them on YouTube because I wasn't paying for that now. Mm-hmm. And there is one with them. Um, you fight actually like a beat 'em up style f- fighting game. It's like pretty much you fight um, with Ryu and Akuma from Street Fighter. Really? So okay. yeah, there's DLC for it, <laughs> which I haven't got either. But definitely, yeah, really enjoyed that game. Really loved it. Cool. Right, what else, Dennis? Uh, I guess I, I could mention uh, The Darkness 2. I guess uh, that came out uh, pretty early uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think it was the first game I bought, actually, in 2012. And um, very good, very good, very good sequel to uh, the original uh, Darkness. Uh, very much enjoyed it. The, uh, the finishers... Uh, uh, that he utilizes are incredible, <laughs> pretty gruesome yeah. and pretty incredible. <laughs> the wishbone and the uh, all of those. Execution. Yeah, the, the executions, the execution, yeah. That's pretty, uh, 
pretty gruesome, pretty gory, but uh, very good, uh, very good game, very good story, a good story to it. And uh, there's pretty much certainty that there's going to be uh, Darkness Three, the way it finishes, <laughs> the way the, yeah. the story finishes. So pretty certain there's going to be a Darkness Three. So I'm going to get it for sure because uh, first two games were pretty awesome, pretty awesome games. Did you ever play the original Darkness, Sami? I did, and I loved it. I thought it was a very underrated game. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. The the multiplayer sucked balls. Yes, yeah. I was going to say that. The multiplayer was terrible. <laughs> but the story, the main story of it, I absolutely loved. Like, yeah, it was definitely one of my favorite. It's kind of one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360. I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I was, I was probably going to mention it as well, though, but, like, you pretty much mentioned it for me. <laughs> really, really did enjoy that game. Uh, it's a bit too short, though. Yeah. That's probably one of the main, that's probably my main criticism of the game. It is like I paid full price and only played like five, six hours. It's like, it's like I kind of wish it was longer though because I, I I wanted to play more of it. Yeah, I think. But there is like first one was longer, I think, right? Yeah, I think it was around like eight to ten hour mark. I think it was yeah. like twice as long. Mm-hmm. So this one's shorter, unfortunately. But there is like the co-op mode, like Vendetta mode, yeah. which is a hell of a lot better than the multiplayer mode in the oh, yeah. first one. <laughs> so if you like your co-op, it's definitely fun. Because you play these different characters, like there's this like voodoo guy, there's this Irish guy, which Des loved, <laughs> pretty much taking a mickey out of me for. <laughs> um, and basically, these sort of these the, you do these missions that sort of take place between certain parts of the main game, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think um, you're actually sent by uh, uh, what's his name, Tommy. You're, is it Tommy? Or Johnny, I think his name is. Johnny, yeah. You're so I forget. I know, I know who you're talking about, but I forget his character's yeah. name. The main character in the first one is Tommy. I don't know. Is he still the main character? Is yeah, he the same he, guy? He, yeah. Yeah, Jackie Estacado, you mean? Jackie Estacado. Yeah. There you go. What am I thinking? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, we were thinking the same thing because I was... So <laughs> much vodka. I think, <laughs> I think I was taking a prey, actually. This prey is uh, Tommy. But anyway. Yeah, prey is Tommy, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Jackie Estacado sends you up on uh, vendettas like to kill certain members of uh rival gangs and uh naturally they're they're not really only human there are some uh some little surprises as you go along but yeah that's uh it's pretty cool the vendetta part of it is uh like uh, 12,000 times better than uh, <laughs> than what the, the first game had to offer so yeah, yeah. very good I actually also de- forgot to mention st- darkness. I think I I think I like Cinder because the fact is the darkness they're done by the same team. Yeah, Starbreeze. Starbreeze, yeah. Actually. Starbreeze did darkness on the Syndicate. So if you like the darkness, then chances are you should like the Syndicate. Syndicate because I that's probably one of the reasons why because I really like the darkness and yeah. Starbreeze did Syndicate, which fortunately didn't sell that well. I think I was sold like 120,000 worldwide, I believe, yeah. which is very bad. It's very bad. Yep. That's uh, too bad. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's a pretty good game also, so it's all too bad that it didn't sell as well. That'll probably be the next, that's probably the next game I'm going to mention now is the Syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just, I, it kind of took me away. It just kind of you know, surprised me, though, because I just really enjoyed it. I haven't, I haven't played the co-op yet whatsoever. And I heard the co-op's actually much better than the campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just, I really enjoyed the, I, like, I just enjoyed the campaign. I just really enjoyed the the different powers you got. Like, you basically, this guy has his chip, though, cyberpunk world. And you do these things, you can, like, you know, hack turrets to um, change and shoot the enemies. You can make these guys um, suicide, the suicide um, ability. Yeah. Basically, you go to an enemy and, like, hold the left bumper. And basically, the, the bar comes up on the screen. Basically, he shoots himself, pretty much. And he takes out a few guys if they're surrounding him as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like, other ones persuade. You can basically, a guy can, you can persuade a guy to shoot for, to help you out, taking out enemies and things like that. Yeah. It, and it's like this. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. And it's like this dark overlay mode as well, which is pretty much kind of like, it just reminds me of, you know, the detective mode in Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much like that. You know, it's like whole, like, kind of, you know, infrared, like wireframe or whatever you want to call it now. Yeah. 
Pretty cool, though. Really enjoyed it, though. The game reminded but, like, me a bit of uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. Yeah. That's probably that's the one thing as well, though. I actually kind of want to go and play that now after playing this. Yeah. But the thing is, though, I think what Derek was ta- saying, saying about it as well kind of has put me off a little because he said it's, it's, it's a game that pretty much has it kind of forces you know certain some parts that go stealth. Yeah, that kind of turns you up to it too. I'm not the biggest stealth guy. The only one, the stealth sort of, like, in terms of stealth, is the only one series I've gotten into is, like, Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. But I've never, like, I've tried, like, Splinter Shell, Confection, I quite like, but it wasn't really as stealthy as the previous ones. Mm-hmm. It was a bit more in the action, yeah. right, in a way. And the Blacklist one kind of looks the same way as well. But so Assassin's Creed has a little bit of stealth in it, so... Yeah, as well. Like, yeah, but like, no, it's not like you know, to the point of you know, if you get caught, you're pretty much fucking screwed. Mm-hmm. Not to the point of like some of some of those really stealth games, like this earlier Splinter Cell games and things like that. Now, yeah, and like certain like in Batman as well. Sometimes as well, like there's certain areas in that game you have to be stealthy or else you're gonna get screwed. Yeah, in certain ways as well. But yeah, Syndicate, not a great game. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, any more to ask? Uh, I guess we should uh, mention, well, I talked about The Walking Dead a little earlier. That's uh, another, uh, I, sh- I should maybe, we could say game, because it's not complete yet. There's only two episodes out of five, but it's very good, very good. If you like uh, zombies and stuff like that, there's uh, plenty in this game, plenty of dismemberment and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's enjoyable. I, sh- I think I should mention... Uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, I guess we should maybe uh, mention. Yeah, them. go ahead. Yeah, mention that. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't played too. I haven't played enough of it to really warrant the uh, overall opinion, though. Mm-hmm. So, well, I, I finished uh, the main story. Uh, it gets really tedious towards the end, but uh, it's a pretty good game. It's very like it's an RPG, but it's uh, there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of action in it, so. Uh, that's what drew me towards it because uh, like other types of RPGs I'm not really you know into but this uh, when there's a little bit of action and a lot of fighting like uh, let's say Mass Effect or uh, Kingdoms of Amalur that I'm going to like it so really enjoyed uh, Kingdoms of Amalur uh, overall and it's too bad that there won't be any more <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur so there was, I think there was two pieces of DLC released and that's Pretty much, all, that's pretty much all we're going to get now, unfortunately. Yeah. Cause, uh, Unless someone actually buys the license or whatnot now, but mm-hmm. I, I doubt it. Yeah, studio went down, so I don't think we're going to get a sequel to that. So, too bad. It was a good game. Yeah, it's a shame. There's certain games, like, there's a ga- certain game that I want for the longest time, but it's never going to happen. The Shenmue 3. <laughs> yeah. I want it so bloody bad. Um. Oh, did I just hear yeah there from Sammy? Have you played the first two then? I've played the first one on a Dreamcast. I've never played the second one though. Okay. Play the second one, it's a lot better. Is it really? Yeah, I love the second one. I have to hunt that down then. You have to get on the Xbox, of course, because you've never got it over there for the Dreamcast, which yeah. kind of sucks. So that, was, the Jake... that was one of the reasons why I've never played it. Is I've played the first one on the Dreamcast. I'd, I'd wanted to play the second one on the Dreamcast, but... I just don't feel like importing it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of say this sucks. I don't know why though. Why you he's never got it though. Um, so that, but I absolutely love the Shenmue series. But you have, you have the sack one on the Xbox, which has like a DVD if you can get it with like an it's like a 90 minute edited film, pretty much of, of the first one. Mhm. So if you need to sort of, you know, catch up, watch it and then play Shenmue too, okay. which has a Ah, it just has a quite a unique voice dub, pretty much. <laughs> I can't. And it's it's <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> but the first one wasn't that great either, though. But I think the second one's probably even tops it, though. And that's the thing about the Dreamcast version. The Dreamcast version had a the Japanese dub, mm-hmm. which is a lot better. Um, but yeah, the second one's a lot better. The second one, I love both of them, but I really enjoy the second one more. Just fixes some of the problems I have with the first one. Um, at the end of the day. Um, anyway, what else? Um, 
Jeez, why not the games that I played this year? Actually, I'll have to check this. I'm going to go. Um, Maybe we should fan- give it a word to uh, Mass Effect 3, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Mass Effect 3. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, Mass Effect 3, of course, yeah. <laughs> pretty much was going to pretty much bring that up anyway, eventually. Yeah, yeah Mass Effect 3. Really enjoyed the game. Um, the ending was, well, everyone has their own opinion of the like, ending. There's people out there didn't think it was too bad. There's people in the middle like, yeah, it's all right or whatever. And there's a lot of people that absolutely bloody detest the ending with all of their heart. And we all know the stories of... Um, people basically stand the game on, basically people suing Bioware or whatever, filing out um, <laughs> complaints and things like that. Like and the that's the way. <laughs> yes, yep. that's right. Yep. Pa- a group of people sent, like, was it 400 cupcakes or something to Bioware? That was like yep. a thousand. I thought it was like an ungodly amount of number. Yeah, it might have been that there. And I think Bioware sent them on to like a charity, I think, didn't they? I think that was the case. Yeah, I think so. Which that's good, but I want to know yeah. who made all those cupcakes, because Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, Pi took, the Pi took, yeah, the Pi started when the, finished, the Pi started when they were playing the game, and then the Pi ramped it up once they've seen the ending. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Mass Effect 3, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good game, though. It's a, it's a good, fin- it's a good, um, sort of, well, finale, um, for the time being to the series. Probably would be a fourth one, Probably. you know, and, and Bioware and EA. Yeah. There's a Gears of War prequel coming, which I don't know why. Um, I couldn't curl. I actually couldn't care less about it. I really like three, <laughs> but I couldn't care less for Gears of War Judgment. Yeah. Yeah, but Mass Effect three ending. You either love it or you hate it. I'm one of those ones like I can see why people are really annoyed. Mm-hmm. I I don't I don't like it when they got really annoyed when they went the com- the whole suing complaints and all that right. But I can see why people hated it. The extended cut actually came out, like we mentioned earlier, and I see I watched them all and like, yeah, they're they're all right. They're not they're not. They they might uh, answer a few questions for some people, mm-hmm. but like they're 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 all right though. But like I say, I, will, I didn't have a big problem. But the second one's still better. So you're playing the best version. Yeah. Best, best one. one in the game, Sammy, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how I'm going to feel about the ending, if I'm going to be one of those people that has to immediately go bake a thousand cupcakes, or... <laughs> <laughs> or I'm just like, yeah, okay. Just basically, uh, yeah, get get certain odd takes and, and then send them on the bow or then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't hate it. I mean, I didn't love it, but I, I'm not going to, you know, go up to Bioware and say, you, you know... He screwed it up and everything like that, so I'm not going to play the DLC until some proper DLC comes out. I mean, maybe when the proper DLC comes out, then I'll go back and play the like the ending, the, the, the extended cut ending, and then go on to the DLC and then see how it goes from there. I know, I know Derek hated the ending. Yeah, Derek he hated it. Last time. He absolutely yeah. hated it. I know a few other people hated it as well. In, so the, in yesterday's podcast, he said he won't even touch the the DLC that'll come out. So he he really disliked uh, what they did with the the game. So I think he liked the multiplayer more than the main yeah. game. I think so. I think he did. Because he bought the he got the DLC for it yeah. pretty much for the mm-hmm. multiplayer, which I didn't get. I I just had my fill of that multiplayer after a week or two anyway. Mm-hmm. He played a bunch of it too. So. Yeah, I know you played a lot of it. Yeah, I played a lot of it did. also. Yeah, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, multiplayer that they put in there. Pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Mass Effect Three. Um. I think we'll get a few more here before we head on. Um. Another one I've got. Um. Final Fantasy Thirteen Two. Mm-hmm. Which I liked more than the first Thirteen. That is the unpopular opinion, <laughs> I believe, because a lot of people like 13. I like 13. The graphics were great. The music was great. The battle system was awesome. The story, I thought, was mediocre because, as I said before, it took too damn long to get going. Mm-hmm. You had to play the game for 20 to 25 hours before anything in the story actually happened. Mm. And that's what killed it for a lot of people. Yeah. 
have you, did, you ever, did you play 13, Sammy? I have never played a Final Fantasy game. That is my uh-huh. my gaming confession. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you said you weren't into RPGs anyway, so I can I, I can pretty much see why that's the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and... I haven't even tried. Like, I've tried, like, different RPGs, but for some reason I've never even tried to play Final Fantasy. Yeah, well, 13 is probably not the best one to get into, though. Mm-hmm. Um, it does, like, it does have a great battle system, though, but it might, you know, mm-hmm. overwhelm you, though. It's just a weird battle system. And this one, it's just pretty much the same, but it adds this, like, monsters. You collect these, it's pretty much like Pokemon, in a way. You collect these monsters to help you fight in, in battles. And you have to fight the, the get the right monster to, for, the, for, for the right fight now. You basically have to strategize. Um, but I really like 13 too. I, I really like the story more. I like the whole time travel element pretty much. I like the villain more. I pretty much like the sort of whole. I said like this. I, I like more. I like it more than the 13. And not a lot of people share that um, opinion though. But I really enjoy it. And it's that's still one of my favorite games of this year. Really enjoyed 13 too. Um, basically, get uh, if you if you weren't a fan of 13. If you if you, if you hit the if you hit the battle system in thirteen, you're probably actually probably not gonna enjoy this here because it's pretty much the same. But mm-hmm. it's it's I enjoyed it though nonetheless. Um, anything more, dance? Because I think I'm pretty much done with my say. Yeah, I'm pretty much done also. I guess uh, MLB came out this year, so I've been playing a lot of that. Guess I should actually mention it. But uh, yeah, it's baseball. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because just looking at my finished games here, though, that's pretty much all I've played, though. Like, uh, I could put Lottie Top Chainsaw there, but <laughs> but I, I like the game, but I have, I don't love the game now. I think it's a competent game, mm-hmm. but it's not brilliant, but that's, that's, that's enjoyable enough. That is one of the um, games I'm definitely going to be picking up, just because I, I love the whole, the uh, the humor in it and the style of it. And um, I thought it was very cool that uh, one of the pre-order bonuses, one of the skins, was the uh, little Jimmy Aaron skin, who's the lead singer of Mindless Self-Indulgence, which is a band I've liked since I was, like, 16. So I thought that was very cool. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I definitely worth picking up now. Not, like, maybe full price now, but, like, once yeah. on shape. I've but heard like, yeah, the... quite a few people say it was pretty short, so I'm glad I didn't pre-order it and, you know, put the 60 bucks down on but I think I mean, I'm going to pick it up once it's gotten a little bit cheaper. Yeah, it's like five, six hours, though. But, yeah, the personalities there are great. The soundtrack's awesome. Um, so it is. I love the soundtrack in it. Some great tunes in it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a good game. Right, just before we move on to the final topic here, I just want to go on some of the games we've been look, we're looking forward to um, for the rest of the year now. Um, I think I'll probably mention the one I'm looking forward to for the rest of the year the most, which is Darksiders 2. <laughs> I cannot wait for that game. Um, I was really annoyed that it got delayed because if it didn't get delayed, I'd be playing that. I'd be playing that right now because it would be night. <laughs> because it would, have been, it would have been out there on Friday yeah. here. So it got delayed two months, which really got it was annoying. But that's definitely my most anticipated game for the rest of the year because I absolutely love the first one. And if you're if you like Zelda, it's kind of like a mature Zelda in my opinion, because it has a, shares a lot of the same elements of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Um, that. That's definitely one. I definitely pick up the first one if you haven't though. Um, definitely get it. And what 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 are you looking forward to, Sammy? Um, well, there's a, a few things I'm looking forward to. As I mentioned before, Resident Evil Six, just because I'm a zombie dork and anything with zombies, I'm there. <laughs> Um, also Borderlands 2, of course. Mm-hmm. The first one was absolutely <laughs> yeah. amazing, and I'm very excited for the second one. And then, um, two less mature titles would be, um, Epic Mickey 2, just because I am a Disney fanatic, and I really enjoyed the first game. Um, I have to play through it, so I do. I played some of it, though, and enjoyed it, though, but I have to play more of it. It's good. I, I enjoyed it. And then I, I was surfing online a little while ago, and I hadn't heard anything about it before, but um, the new Sly Cooper game, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. 
Yes, I think that's coming out this year. Yeah, I I loved the uh, the trilogy on the PlayStation 2. I didn't pick up the HD collection when it came out for the PS3 just because I already had all three of the other games. But I'm excited to see a, a new game in the series. I've only played through the first one. I've got I've got I've got I've got I've got um got I think I got all of them on the PS2 and I've got the trilogy as well, but I only played through the first one. Yeah, I'll the, have to play through the second and third. The first one's the worst one in my opinion. I think the second one is my favorite. Um the third is it's you know, has the whole three D levels and stuff with the old red and blue glasses. Yeah, that's um, right, I remember that. Yeah, I would opt out glasses, of that. Yeah. I just play it in regular two D. But I love the the cel shaded graphics. I love the platforming. I love the characters. So I'm very excited. Yeah, that, for that's you. yeah, that's one I have to go back to sometime. A very good series. Is that your phone working? Is it? <laughs> that's <Mine>. fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. It's okay. I think that was. I think that was. Sound. It's alright. Speaking of background noises, if you have guys happen to hear somebody screaming at, at the Xbox coming from my side. Nope. No, no I'm okay. kind of heavy breathing at times. <laughs> my uh, my fiance is in the next room screaming at the Connect. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's he playing? <laughs> yeah, well, he's watching Netflix, but he's trying. He's too lazy to use the controller, so he's trying to use the voice commands. And it's every few minutes I'm hearing Xbox, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. No, I think I, I actually not, heard I him like scream. Why don't you like me? <laughs> 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 I was uh, worried that you guys could hear that, but hopefully. Yeah. We, we, probably would have said, we probably would have said something if we did. <laughs> but um, other than that, I know they're they're kind of typical games, and I probably won't play them play them a lot, but just because I'm probably gonna get caught up in the hype. Uh, Halo Four and Black Ops Two. Mm-hmm. So. I've picked up every other Halo game, and like I said, I'm still playing the original Black Ops, so I might as well just skip Modern Warfare 3 and go straight to Black Ops 2. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's about it for me in, in the coming up year or so. Um, hopefully birthday and Christmas presents, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mine's, ba- mine's past, so no birthday presents for me, but... <laughs> I I just usually buy most of my stuff anyway. Yeah. So what are you even looking forward to this? Uh, well, we already said Borderlands 2, so yeah, that's probably the biggest one this year that I'm looking forward to. Uh, Dishonored, which uh, looks up. Yes, I actually awesome. haven't I actually haven't watched the the videos they put out for it yet. The you know the play this this the action way and the stealth way, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I watched those. It looks. Looks phenomenal. Looks really good. So that's another game I'm really looking forward to this year. Uh, of course, Need for Speed Most Wanted, um, which uh, I said was my uh, game of show of uh, E3. So looking forward to that one. Um, I guess I should mention also Halo 4. Uh, I'm also a very big fan of Halo, so I played all of them. So finished all of them also. So. Uh, I can't wait for four. It uh, looks very different from what's been going on with uh, the other ones. So you went I'm just gonna call it. I'm just gonna call it Halo Prime. Halo Prime. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because it's Metroid Prime. Like I just imagine now, like it pretty much has its similarities to Metroid Prime. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I, I know a lot of people have been saying that. Um, it should go with uh, Assassin's Creed Three, also, which looks. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and that looks stuff. really, really good. There you go. <laughs> Just love the set. I love the satin. No, I love the colonial America satin. Pretty much looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, besides that, not a whole. I mean, talked about the Expendables too. I guess you know, I, I kind of want to see what that game looks like. When's that game coming out? September thirtieth. It says here. Right, so it's like after the films out then? Yeah, same day as uh, FIFA and Rock Band Blitz, which I have on my list. So. <laughs> uh, I'm getting FIFA 13 because uh, the Montreal Impact should be in the game this year. So it'll give me an uh, incentive to get, uh, to get the game this year. I'll play as my hometown team, finally. So those uh, should be getting that one. 
maybe should mention the uh, Medal of Honor Wad Fighter, which looks pretty good. Uh, mm. Lord of the Don't Carla as well. <laughs> Lego Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, which I know. definitely looking forward to it now. <laughs> yeah, too bad it doesn't have online co-op, which is, sucks. But. None of them had since the complete Lego like, Star Wars, the complete saga, yeah. which I don't get whatsoever. They have like problems with the latency or trying to play. I don't get whatsoever. Mm. Yeah, those games deserve online. Like I like I think they said they were going to have online for Lego Harry Potter, the first one, yeah. and they didn't. They didn't. No. That's weird because I think those games would be phenomenal uh, uh, playing online. I have, you know, for the Lego games, I have my nephews who absolutely love the Legos and the Lego games. So I guess I can play with them. But, you know, I sh- as you there, and I don't have a lot of people my age who play video games. So there you go. Um, Black Ops 2. She, I'm not really, I'm like, I'm not, oh, my God, anticipating it. But it looks decent. Like, You'll buy it anyway, though. <laughs> probably, you know, you know, it's Call of Duty, so we all get I'll rant, I'll rant it. I'll get caught in that trap of buying, uh, <laughs> buying the game. Uh, the hype. <laughs> yeah, the, the hype, absolutely. And I guess uh, that's pretty much it. Let's hope uh, we get some news from. Uh, I know this is uh, wishful thinking, but Half Life Two Episode Three. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's basically Shamu 3 territory at this point now, so it is. So I know the screenshots came out this week, so we talked about that on uh, me and Derek's uh, version of the podcast yesterday. Uh, hey, if, uh, if a Duke Nukem Forever can come out, anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even if it did, well, I actually played some of Duke Nukem Forever and I actually think it's alright. It's definitely I've played a lot worse games in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. I should try it out. I should probably get it for computer and try it out. I got it for, I got it for free. I got it on sale on Steam. I think it was like three pound odd or something. Yeah, it, it it shouldn't be too expensive, so I'll probably get it for PC. Probably ten dollars, maybe fifteen dollars or something I assume. Mm-hmm. Probably. So yeah, there you go. I think those are my um I guess anticipated until the end of the year. Of course, there's NHL 13, which I always get since I'm Canadian. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's a law over here to get the NHL games when they come out. Canadian law, so there you go. <laughs> Should be getting that one. So, yeah. that's it. All right, I mentioned Darksiders 2 already there before um, you guys went. And um, again, I'm actually really looking forward to this coming out this week here, which is on the 3DS, and that is Sailor Rhythm Final Fantasy. I played the demo, I mentioned it last week on the podcast, last time on the podcast. I'm really looking forward to this game. Just Final Fantasy music and rhythm games, like, yep, that's me sold pretty much. Um, um, I don't know if it's going to come out this year now. For the like, It's one of those games I've seen on E3. It's for the Wii U. We don't know anything more about the Wii U when it's going to actually come out now, but it does come out this year. It's the Project P100 game, which I'm very disappointed to hear no one from the podcasts I listen to mention that game whatsoever. I'm disappointed the Rad Rascals. I'm disappointed at OKS. I assume all Gen Gamers probably didn't mention it either. I don't think they did. So I think I'm probably all the podcasts that I have don't listen to probably did though. But I assume one of them would at least mentioned it. But no, it's Platinum Games, so I'm assuming, I thought someone would have been on up and that shit. It looks great, it kind of looks like, kind of like um, Beautiful Joe's sort of style. I know, not style shit though, but just like the characters look like something from Beautiful Joe, because it's, it's people who did Beautiful Joe are doing that game. Rayman Legends for the Wii U. Loved Origins. Definitely getting Legends. Um. Paper Mario Silver Star for the 3DS. I love the, I love the, or Sticker Star, I think it's called. I don't know. Really, I I really enjoy. Yeah. Paper Mario, I really like the Paper Mario games. I love the, and, so I love, I love Thousand Year Door on the GameCube. It's my favorite GameCube game. Um, I didn't actually finish Super Paper Mario. So I haven't, I'll have to get back into it as well. But really looking forward to Paper Mario. Uh, it's very hard though. It's like some of the games that you're looking forward to actually got delayed. Like I was looking forward <laughs> to Bioshock Infinite. I was just yeah. about to mention that. 
But I got to delay to like next year. I yep. know. <laughs> this is what kind of sucks though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think really, that's pretty much. I think all the games these these guys already mentioned are pretty much sort of on May. Well, three of them are on May. Um, hit list as well, pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much all. Um, kind of gone on long enough here anyway. This is a pretty long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, two guess. hours, over two hours twenty, pretty much two hours twenty we're Boom. coming up to. So hopefully, just get through this last section pretty um, quickly, and that'll be it. Though, so finally, we've been what we've been watching now. So, Sammy, take it away. Well, the the first thing is um, True Blood. I recently picked up season four Blu-ray DVD combo, and I'm on the last disc of that. And I absolutely love the True Blood series. Um, I've yeah, read, yeah. I've read the first two books, and I'm trying to hunt down the third one for cheap so I can read it. And um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, I don't have HBO, so I have to wait for them to come out on DVD. I know the fifth season is on TV now, um, but we were we were actually going to see the Avengers, and we were waiting on the the next showing, so we just decided to walk around Walmart, and we happened to see that the um the new season was out on Blu-ray, so we snatched it up. And uh, uh, it's addictive. Yeah, and I, 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 I love that series as well. The good thing about the books in the TV series, though, is you can actually, if you wanted to, read ahead in the books and not spoil the show because it's so different. It is, yeah. I, I, I've got the omnibus of the first three books. I only read the first one, and it is a lot different from the first season. I mean, it's still very good, and it's still like the just of the thing, but... It is very, very different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really love the I really love True Blood as well. It, it's on a channel here called FX, which I, I talked about this before though, like the latest season, season five will be coming out here in the autumn, which is great instead of like next year, which the previous seasons have done, so I don't have to wait like nearly a year before uh, we get it over here. Mm-hmm. But thing is though, I said I think I said to a few people I should watch it online. You know, through certain illegal means, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm um, tempted to. I really am. <laughs> yeah, I said I was going to do that for la- I was going to do that for the last season as well, but I didn't bother doing it. But I'll probably just wait off though. But I'll probably just wait until all of them are out, and then I'll probably just watch them like go back to back or something, probably. But no, I love the True Blood series. I love the True Blood series as well. Um, I actually I stumbled across it um, when I still lived with my mother. The first season had started, and I was just flipping through channels and happened to you know see the very beginning of the first episode. I thought it was a movie. So I'm like, oh, this looks interesting, and started watching it because I'd heard about it, um, but I didn't you know think that it would be any good. And I ended up just getting sucked in, and ever since then, it's been an addiction. <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of people I know really like it. I know you like it. Um, Tim Jumble Jumpy really likes it. Steph the Deaf really likes it. And a few other people I know really like it as well. Just one of those series that a lot of people like. And I, for one, love it. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think you ever watched an episode of it. No, I haven't watched True Blood. I've, I've heard a lot about it, but I've never, I haven't ever watched an episode. I probably should. I'm not big on vampires, but probably should. Watch. Uh, well, it's, it's vampires, it's werewolves, it's fairies, it's okay. Yeah, look at everything. <laughs> there are certain points in the series that does get a bit fucked up, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not Twilight. Then, then. It's not. No, it's definitely not. Definitely Twilight. not. It's, Twilight. it's a. It's a. It's a lot more mature than Twilight. Okay. So if if you expect a Twilight, no, you're not. So <laughs> you should be all right there. Okay. Cool. I'll check it out. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people hate fucking Twilight with all their yeah, hearts. Yeah, uh, I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I've no. seen the first movie. <laughs> That's all I've seen. I watched I the first movie. It, but I don't see the hype either. Like, I don't see yeah, why I, people are freaking out over it. Yeah, there is people out there actually go absolutely gaga over that series. Yep. Like, the books and the films. Like, really? But then again, people will be saying the same thing. It's like, why are you so greedy gaga over, like, Harry Potter or something like that? It's like, because I love those series. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I love the Harry Potter books. I love the, I like the films. Yeah. What I don't understand is like 30-something-year-old woman going, Team Edward, Team Jacob. Like, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't that kind of disgusting? <laughs> yeah. They're kind of like, what, being cougars or something? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Are you Team Edward or Team Jacob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man. Uh, um, moving on. Save it all before I go into the The um other TV series I've been watching. I've uh, recently watched a lot of episodes of Pawn Stars. There was a, a marathon on. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show at all. Yeah, my father loves that show. He's nuts for that. I watch it sometimes when uh, when he's over. Or I'm over there, and uh, I watch it sometimes. It's 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 an it's an interesting show. It's pretty good. Yeah, they, some of the things they have on there are just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of a you know it's fun to watch every now and then. It's not a lot like what I do for a living, but it's pretty similar. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, another view of that, but, um, some, like, they, I've seen a few gaming things on there, like, they had a, a pretty large statue of Mario that somebody brought in, I forget how much they got for it, um. Was that the show where a guy had, like, this 001 SNES and was trying to look for $13,000 or something for it? No, that was, uh, Storage Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. I was a, I was a different one. Yeah. Okay. So they're all kind of similar, but yeah, that's that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. And I remember saying like I think I was on line somewhere, someone linked it or something, saying this guy had this first. I think it was like the 001 model of the NES or something, like serial number or whatnot. And I was like looking for. It's like he was going to get like loads of money for it, and like the guy offering him what a hundred and like. Hardly anything, really, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that those um shows like that have just completely ruined the the flea market, you know, secondhand thrift, you know, eBay business because people see that you know people get these things and they think that oh I can get that much for for my old Super Nintendo or whatever and it's just like, like oh my god like I'm trying to hunt down an original Nintendo because I gave my sister mine. And I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna pay seventy dollars for an NES. Mm-hmm. And that's... you won't, you won't, you won't want to know how much I paid for that Nintendo. <laughs> like I've seen a few recently, in, you know, uh, gaming you know, like retro gaming stores and flea markets and stuff. And, but I'm no way, no way in hell am I paying seventy dollars for an NES. <laughs> so. No, yeah, like um, I think it was Holly on the OKS this one this week. Uh, basically. Was talking about fucking going to this flea market or something. This guy was looking for seventy dollars for all these used games for each used game. I was like, really? Each? Jeez, like, seventy dollars. Yeah. Each. Okay. Yeah. It's like I think he was just putting on. And yeah. If you, it's just ridiculous. There is people out there. I think just because it's an old game means it's it's worth something. Yeah. Which is not always the case. Like say you can get like say Super Mario World for example, just for an example. Mm-hmm. Um. Someone can come out there and basically say, uh, this is an old game, this is a 20 old game, uh, how much do you want for it? Uh, okay, uh, what do you want, £40? No. <laughs> I'm not paying £40 no, for a game, I could get, no. get it for like, like a fourth of that price, even less. Mm-hmm. But there is games out there, or like memorabilia and accessories, or a lot more thing. Like, there's a game I really want to get on the Sega Saturn called Panzer Dragoon Saga. Yeah. But it's pretty rare, and it's like goes for like two hundred pound, three hundred dollars or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's it's really hard though anyway. But like yeah, yeah. but like, yeah, I, I don't watch those shows though. But should what I know a lot of people really like those kind of shows, you know, Storage Wars, yeah. Bond Stars, and some of these other really weird kind of you know niche shows like um, Hoarders and Interventions. Intervention shows like that. Yeah, my dad watches. My dad is addicted to Storage Wars. He just he <laughs> freaking loves. He loves that show. Like he, he can watch like the same show five times. <laughs> he really, yeah, really likes that show. Needless to say, that is not how that business is. I know quite a few people who that is how they make their living, and because of those shows, they are having trouble doing it now because people are paying like a thousand dollars for a storage unit, and really all that you get in those is like used underwear and sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, if you ask anyone that that's what they do for a living, they'll tell you you'll get used underwear and sex toys, and maybe occasionally a good piece of jewelry, and that's it. Jeez, oh, yeah, that's I don't, I, crazy. Right, not getting that off business then. That's one kick off, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much fixed. It's like Survivor. I mean, those, those types of shows, like it's reality shows, like Survivor and Big Brother, and they're all, you know, yes, they're reality shows, quote-unquote, but they're, 
they're fixed and scripted and, you know, yeah, like certain events will be all fixed. I'm pretty sure Storage Wars is the same way. Yeah, like, it has it, to be. Yeah, Taiwan, they, all those shows will have certain fixed moments, so they'll have to make sure they do this here now, just to make it seem more, you know, um, make it more, uh, what am I trying to say here? Jeez, I'm really mumbling today. <laughs> just for like, something to actually, you know, shock people, make it more pa- paling to people on the television, for who's watching on the TV, pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Had people talk down to me because I watch wrestling, and, <laughs> you know, they're like, why do you watch wrestling? It's fixed. Yeah. And you watch reality shows, and you think they're not fixed. So, you know, it's, I don't know. Because wrestling is, you know, obviously fixed because it's very obvious, but a little less than uh, reality shows. But you know, hey, everybody has their own their own thing, I guess. <laughs> we lost Sammy, so we have. Is she back now? Are you back? Yeah, it crashed on me for some reason. We're getting a storm here, so that might have been why. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, jeez, <laughs> yeah. I heard a lot of storms over there. Like, color, like. Colorado's really getting about as well with the wildfires. Yeah, it's been, today it was supposed to be 114. Yesterday it was 108. The day before that was 115. Holy crap. And my air conditioning was not working yesterday. Yeah. (laughs) That sucks. That really does suck. Uh, just before you move on here, I, I said I don't want, you don't want to know how much I paid for the, my NES. I got a NES there a few years back, um, all boxed uh, with all games, all everything boxed, like 40-odd games boxed, a um, few accessories boxed, and I think I paid about 200 250-odd pounds for it. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> you got, you got, you got. <laughs> <laughs> Bones, pretty much. Yeah. But, like, it was all boxed. Everything was boxed, though. Okay, but which is you know. probably would add a bit more value though. So, <laughs> but still, like man, yeah. that's 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 really crazy. Mm-hmm. I don't. Know. You paid a lot more than you should have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, but it was like, yeah, it was like man's games, like forty odd games. There was like some great games there, like you know, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers Three, Castlevania, Little Name of the Dream Master, and a few other little ones that I've never heard of before. Okay. I still have mine. I still have my NES and all my games. And, uh, you know. The original one? The original one, yes. And, you know, my dad said, hey, you should sell it. You know, you should, you could get a pretty good price. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. And, you know, who knows? Maybe in 50, 60 years, maybe I can get, you know, if I'm still around or something. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, my original one broke though. I had to get one then. Mm-hmm. I still have my original SNES. Which is going on 19 years this Christmas, so just my oldest car. Yeah, I had my, my, I still have my original Super Nintendo, and like I said, my original NES is, is still alive and kicking, but unfortunately my little sister has it. I've, moment of uh, idiocracy, I guess. <laughs> 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 so that, well, I thought when I gave it to her, I was like, oh, I can find one, you know, for pretty cheap, and then when I actually started looking, I'm like, holy shit, really? <laughs> So, but I'll get another one eventually. Yeah, um, just don't, don't pay, just don't pay the amount of money I did. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, I'm not even, I'm not, I refuse to pay $70. I'm just, I'll be patient and hopefully come across one very cheap. But until then, I guess I'll just hold out. Um, anyway, go back to your, what yeah. you've been watching after the forest little tangent. <laughs> um, the other two things I've been watching are both movies. The first is a movie called Gone. Um, it stars, I cannot remember her name. Amanda Seyfried. Is that her name? I think that's the one she's, who's in Mamma Mia. She's the little dorky friend in uh, Jennifer's Body. Yes, that's her, yeah. Okay, yeah, I could not remember her name to save my life. She um, was in uh, Mean Girls as well. Yeah, <laughs> she was. But uh, she's the survivor of a, a kidnapping. Um, then unfortunately, no one believes her that actually happened. Because she says that you know this, this guy kidnapped her and put her in this hole in the woods and then tried to kill her, but she escaped. Um, but nobody believed the story. They said because they couldn't find the hole and all this, this stuff. Um, and so she believes that her sister has been kidnapped by the same gentleman. And she basically spends the entire movie trying to save her sister because the police and and no one else will help her because they don't believe that, you know, that she's. This is actually happening. They just think that her, you know, her sister went off and, 
you know, went to partying and just, you know, she'll be back, you know, in two days or something. It's it's not the best of movies. Um, it does have a, a twist at the end that I thought was pretty interesting, but I also thought that it was rushed. Mm-hmm. I think they could have done a lot more with it. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I I watched it about the same time I watched The Grey, and it was better than The Grey. <laughs> yeah. I know, a few, I know a few people didn't like The Grey. I think yeah. Derek mentioned it like the last episode, didn't he? Yeah, Derek said uh, he didn't really enjoy it. Like, it's not... It's not even remotely close to what the trailer, um, like, tries to to show, like Liam Neeson being a tough guy and fighting wolves and all that stuff. And apparently, it's yeah. not even that at all. Yeah. I mean, I would That's... at least rent it. I know he said don't even rent it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would I would at least rent it. But it definitely was not one of my favorite movies. I thought Gone was was quite a bit better. Um, and yeah. The other movie that I watched recently was one called My Idiot Brother, starring Jason Lee. Oh, that looks good. How, how is that? Is that it was, I enjoyed it a lot. It was actually pretty funny. Um, he plays kind of this hippie-type character that, at the beginning of the movie, sells drugs to a, a uniformed police officer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he kind of gets tricked into it, though. Um, and then when he gets out of jail, he finds out that his girlfriend at the time has moved in a new boyfriend and has decided that he will not get his dog back, which happens to be named Willie Nelson. Um, (laughs) And the whole movie, you see uh, Jason Lee's character bouncing around from family member to family member. Like, he's got a lesbian sister, a sister that's like a a writer for a really big magazine, um, a sister who's married to a guy that makes documentaries, and, you know, just different characters that supposedly have their lives together, but turns out they really don't. Um, and he just, he messes up, quote unquote, messes up each one of their lives. But, you know, in, in the end, it, you know, it's a, kind of like a feel good comedy. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was really good. I, I seem to like Jason Lee. Yeah, he's um, good. And then I went and saw The Avengers in, oh, in yes. the uh, <laughs> theater. And I absolutely loved it. I know a lot of people weren't happy that uh, Mark Ruffalo was the Hulk, but I thought he did a lot better job than, than uh, God, what was his name? Ed Norton. And yeah, the Ed other Norton. guy played him mm-hmm. in the past. Uh, Eric Bana. Yeah. Eric guy was. But I, I really enjoyed it, and it shocked me how funny the movie was. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be that funny. But it's Josh Whedon. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so if, you, if you really enjoyed them, um, like Buffy and Angel and sort of the humor, humorous moments of it, then I think you'll probably like the Avengers then as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was, I was, it was a packed theater when I watched it, and it was midday, um, surprisingly. But I really, really enjoyed it. We both, both my fiance and I, said that was a movie that we could see multiple times in theaters and not get oh, sick yeah. of it. It's amazing. It's a really, really great movie. Yeah, it's I, really, I don't remember. Gonna be a, a day one buy on Blu-ray for me when it comes out. Yep, me too. Same here. Did you guys watch it in 3D or 2D? Uh, 2D. 2D. Yeah, yeah. same here. Because I was paying 3D isn't seventeen dollars for a, a 3D ticket. Yeah. <laughs> No, I imagined before I was the only one in my in the cinema when I was out there when I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting, I guess. I think that might have been the first time or in a while. I think it might have been the first time I've ever done that. Because usually there's like one other person there yeah. or something. But I think it was the first time that I ever can recall of the only one there in the cinema. Well, you, go in, you go in the afternoon, so, you know. Yeah, like I just... Don't really like going out in the, the evening time though. I just rather just go early in the day and watch it though. Mm-hmm. But like the, I've gone to like films late though. Like I remember seeing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire pretty in um in Edinburgh. So I did when I was in university, mm-hmm. and it was pretty late. It was like after ten in the night though, and I was like a pretty packed theatre there. Yeah. So it was. Mm-hmm. I think but like I just I, 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 ever been empty sorry. for me is when we went and saw a Gamer a while back. It was completely empty. <laughs> Gamer. I actually liked that film. I, I did too, but apparently a lot of people didn't want to go see it in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it in theaters. Now I watched. I seen it on um, I think the Sky here. It was like a satellite service, and um, I watched it, it on there. It's 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 good though. It's like Gerard Butler, of course. Yeah. Being act, all action star, and then uh, what's his na- guy's name? Michael C. Hall, who's Dexter. He's like the bad guy in it. Okay. Um. 
so it's it's a good it's a it's a it's a good I liked it. I think probably some people really hate it though. I I enjoyed it. You should, yeah, check it out though. It's it's worth a watch anyway. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed it. it. I couldn't get over the fact. Um, my problem is with like TV shows that I watch. If it's a character, you know, that I've like for instance it's Michael C. Hall with Dexter. I just couldn't get over the fact that he was Dexter in the movie. Like I kept seeing him as Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you do get that from certain characters, though. Like, yeah, that that's definitely, if you, yeah, that's definitely the case in certain things, though. Or um, like even with the old X Men movies, if I go back and watch those, I just I see you know Sookie instead of Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's that definitely would be the case now. Anything else? That's it for me. Okay, Dennis. What have you been watching? You probably already mentioned this in the live, but you can... Yeah, I'll, I'll touch briefly upon it. I watched uh, 21 Jump Street. Um, naturally, the 2012 <laughs> remake of 21 <laughs> Jump Street. I used to watch the the show when I was younger with uh, the original cast, you know, and got, everybody told me, hey, this is good. This movie's pretty good. It's pretty funny and all that. You should uh, check it out, Channing Tatum. And uh, uh, I always forget the other guy's name, so... There you go. What's, what's his name, Darren? <laughs> I don't know what yeah. this fucking... The fucking name escapes me now as well. Yeah. Um, I, I fucking... I don't know. I knew you were going to say I was like, oh my god. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I know the guy. I can't fucking think of his name. The guy is super bad there. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Can't I'm going to look it up here now. I'm going to fucking... Jeez. Yeah, check, look Isn't it up. Isn't it uh, Seth Rogen? No. No, no. not Seth Rogen. I mean, I don't know. Jonah Hell, that's I knew it was beginning with a yeah, J. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I couldn't think of his name. This is this escaped me for the time being. Yeah, I gotta. It's, I gotta say, I didn't find it as funny as other people kind of tend to say it was. You know, hilarious and one of the funniest movies ever. But I didn't think it was that funny. I mean, it was. There's some funny stuff in it, like uh, when they take the the drug and they they actually go out. Both of them like lose their freaking minds. That that's pretty funny. I mean that's pretty hilarious that 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 part is you know and uh, uh, I guess you know you, you'd expect a cameo from the original uh, 21 Jump Street guys so yes indeed uh, Richard Grieco and uh, uh, another guy that I forgot his name which uh, Jesus Christ I'm not good with names today what's his name Don't even look at me I never seen the show so I won't know No it's the, the guy who does the Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah, there you go. Johnny Depp and Richard Grieco are in the movie, so they make a cameo in the movie, so that was pretty cool. And uh, so I watched uh, watched that. And last night I watched Project X. I don't know if you guys have heard of the the movie. That was that like um, rave party sort of trailer I seen like a few months back, wasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, the guy. It's uh, kids. It's made by the guys who who did the super bad. Um, and I think the hangover, uh, the guy is young kids from high school. They throw a party at this, uh, this guy's house and it's supposed to be like a small party, like only, uh, maybe let's say 50 people. Like the guy goes, it's only going to be 50 people, right? He says, yeah, only 50 people, not more than that. And he ends up having like 1500 people go to his house and like this huge party, like the rave type thing and. You know that's always going to happen, though. It's like, oh, it's only going to have a few people, and then, like, yep, yeah, of course, there's going to be loads more people going to show up. <laughs> yeah, so this guy invites this guy and all that stuff, so he ends up having, like, 1,500 people at his, part, at his, uh, at his house. And uh, anyway, it's pretty, yeah, there's a lot of, the, you know, it's it's somewhat explicit. You know, there's a lot of drugs and boo- booze and boobs and all that stuff in the, in the movie, so... But uh, I don't know what to think of the movie, actually. It's like it's filmed with um, a shaky cam type of, like a guy is filming the the, the entire movie. Like they, they have this guy that follows them around and films them. And at other times, it's like guys are filming with their cell phones. Like it's, you know, they, you go from one guy to the other. And uh, when when you have the cell phone parts, that really... It looks like very low resolution, very low uh, quality movie. Like uh, that's well done, but I mean, 
I don't know what to think of the movie. It's funny at, at parts, you know, it's funny, it's weird, it's, you know, it's, I don't know. It's kind of, uh, I guess, uh, every teenager's fantasy uh, thing, having a huge party and having all these people over. And <laughs> that's not mine. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 that's my idea of a nightmare, quite frankly. Yeah, well, it turns into a nightmare, actually, <laughs> at the end. But, like, uh, this guy comes in, well, you see it in a trailer anyway. Like this guy comes and uh, uh, comes to the party and he burns down pretty much all the neighborhood with the, the flamethrower. So. <laughs> that's pretty. Burn to the ground. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, anyway, it's, it's it's I don't know what to think of the movie. Honestly, it's it's not bad. It's not good. It's kind of a weird type of movie. I, I always wanted to see it. Like as soon as I saw the trailer, I said, Yeah, I want to see this movie. See what it's all about. Because I'm a big fan of shaky cam type movies like um, Cloverfield and Blair Witch and stuff like that. And I really love those movies. So Yeah, fine footage ones. Yeah. yeah I kinda kinda wanted to check it out. It's pretty good. There's nothing horrifying or nothing you know, it's no horror, there's no scary things. It's just you know, kids having a party and it getting out of control and drugs and booze and all that stuff. So uh it's kind of a weird movie. So I don't know know what really to think about it. Uh, and tonight I will probably watch Call of Duty the movie. So, <laughs> but those who don't know, that's Act of Valor. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people have been um, sort of comp- basically saying. It's Call of Duty the film. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna watch that tonight and probably have uh, opinions on it on Twitter since I won't be doing a podcast for a little while. So. <laughs> Uh, probably post uh, thoughts on it on Twitter, but I actually wanted to see that movie because you know it looks like Call of Duty pretty much in the movie form. So I'm gonna check I it out. That secret. Because <laughs> 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 I'll be dragged to watch it. It's yeah. like where it's out in my house. <laughs> I think it's out in DVD and not now, isn't it? Yeah, it's out on the DVD because we have it here on Zoom. So. Since our fucking Netflix sucks ass here in Canada, so just get the net, just get the US one. Yeah, I'll I'll show you how to get the US one. <laughs> Your uh, contact there, <laughs> get the Netflix, uh, US Netflix. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's it's nothing really complicated now. It's 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 easy enough. Mm-hmm. Cool. But like, yeah, the US Netflix library is big. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what we live off of. We don't have cable or satellite or anything. We live off Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five ninety nine a month, and it's completely worth it. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I've been watching, I guess. Okay, I haven't really haven't watched a whole lot of stuff though. Like I've all the usual stuff, like Fraser Friends and all that. There. Um, I watched um the Edge, who's a wrestler, Bio. DVD, the bio thing on Netflix because that's one of the things I really love about Netflix US because they have wrestling stuff there as opposed to yeah, that's cool. elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Is the it's the You Think You Know Me one, which is basically the Edge bio doc. If you've watched those other ones um, for the past several years, you know what you're getting here. Just pretty much him going through his like, career with you know, close friends, family, and out there. Yeah, but it's pretty much yeah. beginning to end, right? It's like uh, at the very end until he retires. Yeah, it's like that. It's not like that one. Ha- it was a few years ago now, which was basically just like a collection of his matches with him, like saying stuff like there now. Mm-hmm. It's not like that now. It's, this is his proper like DVD, pretty much now. Mm-hmm. Um, really enjoyed it. I, it's just, I really I did enjoy the I did because I, Ed was one of my favorite wrestlers and it's just really when I heard when he was returning I was like really surprised because mm-hmm. it, it just came out of the blue but like I said yeah I could see why like I I think like yeah that's I think that's the right call though because if he kept on wrestling he probably would have ended up paralyzed mm-hmm. because he was having this neck prop because he had neck surgery though I think a few times yeah like, oh, once so basically I think it was the right to call. Because there is people out, you know, there's wrestlers out there still wrestling in their 50s and 60s. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ric Flair. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, the fact is, I think, because the fact is, they need the money. Because, like, I think Hulk Hogan especially, though, he needs to stay, stay on clean. Because I know he, he pretty much got fucking clean dry from his divorce, I believe. Yeah, his wife screwed him big time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, he has to um, stay on TV to be somewhat um, credible mm-hmm. in a way. But no, I really enjoyed it though. Um, I, it's not the best one now. I really, really like the Austin one more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mentioned a few episodes ago, which I rec- thoroughly recommend you should check out, Dennis. Yeah, I'll need to do that. Yeah. It's like it's like two and a half hours long that one. Mm-hmm. Definitely great. Uh, I met, I've been watching How I Met Your Mother, though. I've kind of gotten back into it again. Um, the thing is, though, I've been starting my exercise regime, which I know Sammy is part of as well on the Peace Game Room Forum. It's a bunch of us people. Um, Andy from the Radical Rascals put up this thread. That basically, it's this fitness challenge mm-hmm. where you basically put all, all of us de- these details down, basically say your name, your, like, your starting weight, your destination weight, and Basically, what you want to um, achieve in, say, like a month or two months or whatever. And basically, your dad and things like that now. And I've basically been cycling, like, fa- like pretty much nearly every, like six days a week for like 30-odd minutes okay. on the cycling bike. Um, and I've been watching pretty much How I Met Your Mother on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so I have. Well, I've been doing that as well, which is pretty awesome. Which is quite surprising because I said like the iP- my iPad it's like it's a top room. I wa- I'm doing the cycling in the top room. My router is down at the bottom, mm-hmm. and it's it's like it's like three it's like two floors up because we have like a third floor which is kind of like this big like attic room. It's up there works perfectly fine. Really like that show. My I said my brother I mentioned it before. My brother loved it, and I started watching it like last year, and pretty much really enjoyed it though. So it's like. It ha- it's very similar to Friends. Because mm-hmm. there was a thing I seen on the internet a while back that had this like comparison, like picture on picture comparison thing of certain things that happened. And I was like, yep, yeah, wow, that's really the truth. This show does have its very, a lot of similarities to Friends, except it's better. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing. I need to check um, it out. <laughs> Yeah, I I I, I, th- I recommend it though. It's it's great though. It has Jason Segel who did uh, Muppets and who's in for- Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Neil Patrick Harris, um, Alison Hannigan who's in Buffy and um, the American Pie films. Mm-hmm. And um, the uh, do you know you watch the Avengers? You know the girl in it, the black hair, Maria Kobe Smulder. She's in it. Okay. She's, Can- she's Canadian, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. And um, that's it, yeah, that's it. And Josh Ratner, he's the main guy, which he's not really in all this stuff. Um, he was in um, not another teen movie. If you know that film, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> <Right>. yeah, <laughs> he's in it. He's in it for like a few scenes, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I've watched. Not a whole lot though this week. Mm-hmm. I really need to watch a lot more stuff, but <laughs> I game more. I game and work more than I watch stuff. Yeah. That is pretty much all now. This is getting to near the three hour mark. I didn't expect it to go this long. <laughs> but before we head on, um, just first of all, Sam, it was more than a pleasure having you on. Thank yeah, you for having you. me. Um, basically, before you go, plug your, plug your, plug your stuff. <laughs> well, you can find me on YouTube at xtatsplatx. I'm also on Twitter as xtatsplatx. And um, on the forums, it's X, Tats, by X, so I to keep it nice and simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. X, Tax Blood X all around. Um, I am on, I'm DarwayM85 on Twitter, DarwayM85 on YouTube, and just basically, like, Dar, I'm on Facebook as well, though, but I don't really use it a whole lot, so don't bother me trying to find me there now. <laughs> well, I'm uh, D-Boy then on uh, Twitter, which uh, I'm trying to cut down a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm there, I'm still there, and I'm on Facebook, so we, you can find me there, but don't send me friend requests. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're anti-social, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not anti-social, because, uh, um, well, I have my privacy settings on, so uh, if you send me a friend request, I have to approve. Well, same thing, same thing on Twitter, I guess, but, you know, if, uh, if, I don't, if I see your name and I don't know you, well... 
<laughs> I, I would chances accept. are, yeah, chances are you're not going to get thing unless you tell me who you are, something like I'm a fan, I like you, or something like that. There, mm-hmm. then again, maybe be a stalker or something. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's a little scary. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. And <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, you can follow us on um, the at United Kingdom on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You can check us United Kingdom podcast on YouTube. We're on Facebook, United Kingdom podcast group there i invited a bunch of people and i think a few of them accepted the invite mm-hmm. um so I did and um that's pretty much it i think that's all we can talk about unless there's anything else you can want to mention nope i don't think so i can't think of anything okay well again this will probably be a while before doing our podcast anyway since i say this is recorded on the first of july Mm-hmm. So it'll we'll probably be another two, three weeks before we actually do another one. We'll probably wait till a year back, and um, you could tell us all about your New Jersey vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Hope it's not like National Lampoons, because uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not sure. Um. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Um. Actually, before I go, I forgot to mention: if you want to send us emails or questions, go to unitedgamer@gmail.com as well. Yep, forgot to mention that. So I'll check that out as well. So anyway, thank you all for listening. And thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Sammy. And we will see you next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye.